inhabit can be bent to your will only when you enter the fifth dimension. Everybody, everybody. everybody. Wow. Welcome to the podcast. Hey, look Here we this. go. Look at what a jam. Live with AndyManaris.com. Drive with Dre. Yeah, what's going on, man? You know what? It's nice to see you. Let me uh, let me lower this magical tune called Space Cowboy. You guys, I love this song. I put it in an old vlog of mine a couple of years back. I remember that vlog. It was a good one. It was a good time. It was just a car thing. A car thing. So that's a perfect thing to start with. First Segway. of all, I'm very nervous. Segway. Because you are my brother. You are. I am your, your younger brother. My younger brother. For all you out there, all you billions out there watching. Trillions. This is galactic feed. Is there swearing allowed here? A fucking right. Okay. Smoking weed? Sure. I don't have. But okay. But uh, for next time. For next time. Yes. Next time. Because I, I, I feel like I'll have recurring guests. Probably. Probably. And if you would be so kind. I know you, you did me this kindness because normally you don't answer me like... Normally you answer my call on Christmas. Christmas and birthday. Yeah, but other than that, you, you pretty much ghost me? Never. No, this is not true. I have a very good brother and my brother and I share a tight bond. Yes, we do. Um, so you mentioned cars. Mm. So your name is Andy Manaris. My name is Andy Manaris. But the uh, car community... The car community... I'm pretty... I'm pretty... I'm no, I'd say you're doing pretty well. I'm pretty well known in the car community, globally, mostly North America, but globally also. So as, why don't you uh, tell us why that drive is. with Dre. So uh, my name is Andy, but I was named after my grandfather, Andre. So uh, you started calling me Dre like when I was like six. When, when we were young and Dr. Dre was coming up, that's pretty much how it started. You're like, yo, you're Dre. I said, I guess I'm Dre. And then it stuck. The close people call me Dre and the car people call me Dre. So and now it's actually more people calling me Dre than Andy. Yeah, Drive with Dre has a really nice ring to it. It did. It was, it was marketable. And you've always had a, an eye for marketing. Yeah, I was. And so what led to your, your growth, let's say, on social media? Or why do people know you? Why do people know or give a fuck about Drive with Dre or Drive with Dre's cars? Honestly, I have no idea. Um, I had a personal Instagram account like two years ago. And then I felt weird posting my cars all the time because... For me, it's not to show off. It's just uh, I've always loved cars since I was like uh, since I was a young kid. And, wait, where, where am I staring at? You or the the camera? No, you're staring at me. Okay. Yeah. See, that's why I didn't want to have the camera there because you're staring at me. Yeah. No. It's, I just know. Anyway. Um, yeah. So I wanted to separate my personal life with my car life. I really wanted to just build a cool community. Um, so I started drive with Dre. Started posting cars, and it was a reason for me to to buy cars too. <laughs> it was. I said, you know what? Maybe. It wasn't just to, to post pretty pictures. It was to build a community and get to know and get to know a lot of people. And in the last two years, I think I grew in the first year, I grew like 60, 60 K. I'm at 110 almost. And uh, the people that I've met through that, like I've made tons of friends. I've made, made uh, like cool business people. It brings me opportunities for investments. It brings me opportunities to travel and do tons of different car things. Like I get invited to go drive all these new cars all the time. Sometimes it's because maybe I'll buy it. Sometimes they just want my network to, uh, to see what I actually think. Because I'm, I'm brutally honest. I'm not one of those people who is uh, going to get paid ever to, to test something out or do something. And just say, oh, I love and this. And say I love it like 99% of people. You know, every product out there is the greatest. Everything's amazing. It's not. And I'll never do that. And I think that's why I've built a great community, both on my smaller personal page and my bigger car page, is because I don't, I, I say what I truthfully feel, how I feel. You say what you believe. I say what I believe. I'm never going to peddle bullshit. No. because you... And I'm never going to take money to promote something that I don't agree with or that I don't like. But it's not, it's not a horrible thing to do that. It's just I'm in a position where I don't need that, that money to be peddling things, but other people... They do, and you do what you got to do. So there's, yeah. no, there's no right or wrong. It's just preference. Yeah, and it, it, you should do what's, what's good for you. You believe in something. You have, I think one of your, your strengths is your, your opinion or your perspective. Mm -hmm. And so you wouldn't cloud that by just peddling shit. You, you can't do that. You'd rather just build your own stuff. You're, you're very, you have good taste. You're very opinionated. So you wouldn't want to fuck your, your... No, I wouldn't want to fuck my brand or what I believe in. Yeah, so you said that you have no idea how you grew or why people give a shit about Drive with Dre, but I think I know why. <laughs> Enlighten me. It's because you have an amazing eye. Mm -hmm. You take cars that wouldn't 
particularly be known for their sexiness or sportiness or cool factor. And you are able to take a car and see it as a blank canvas and tastefully, you know, throw on some, some rims, Mm -hmm. drop it, put a color scheme together that works, shoot it in a way that catches the eye. Cause I think that's the difference between you and like, let's say other car people yeah, is that your ability to, to like just have a great look and feel and, and like, Essentially, you're like an artist. You take these cars and, and you're just... And that's how I've gone with it. With that page, I've gone in a more artistic route. Like, the first car I bought, it's also... I don't buy them just for the page. I buy them for me because I love them and for the page also, for the followers. But, yeah, I like... Most people will buy that Lambo, a Ventador or whatever it is. And they'll post it and they're, they think they're going to get tons of followers from it and whatever. But when... 500 other people on social media have that Lambo. Nobody really cares anymore. Whereas my recent car was a, was a Ferrari and it's one that most of the old men buy for their wives. It's not known to be the cool internet one or anything like that. But as soon as I put my little touches on it, which is, they're, they're simple little things, but they all come together to make one totally different car. That makes things go viral. That makes things explode because it's the only one on the internet. And I pretty much do that with everything, not just cars. It's like, why would you want to do what a million other people are doing instead of trying to focus and do something unique where you really pop? Yeah. And, and that's what I found. That's, that's where the success from that, the car, the whole car thing came and, and other things. Well, it's like, it's like you're choosing to, to go into the 1%. So when you're in the 1%, like the way I look at it is like, you're doing something, you're charting new territory, right? Like you can go in the 99% and see where things are proven, but there's a lot more competition because yeah. since things have been proven and there's other players doing it, um, you can do it and there will be success, like proven success. But it's, to me, it just seems like more grind work. Mm-hmm. And if you can use, if you have an imagination and the ability to take a risk, you can go venture into the 1% and essentially go with no competition. You're, yeah. you're just doing your thing and it's just like. And I think also like following the rules is like, I don't follow the rules. I don't follow the traditional rules. So I'll give you an example. I hire a lot of professional photographers. They work all over the world. They do their thing to, to take some of my content because I'm very particular, particular or peculiar, particular, particular about uh, the things that I post. I would need everything to be beautiful. Um, so I'll hire the best photographers. They'll do their thing. They'll charge a fortune. I'll pay. I'll get my stuff. And then I put it out there. Minimal likes, minimal engagement. Whereas I'm not a photographer. I buy a mediocre camera. I take the shot that I think is cool. Um, every photo- every professional photographer would tell me, that's not why you're doing that. The car should be angled this way. The wheels should be this way. The, the sky is too bright or whatever. I don't follow any of those rules because I don't even know them. Yet, when I post that picture, it gets five to ten times more engagement, more comments, more shares. Um, and I think, and that's what I do in, in, in every aspect. Because it just hits different. I, I don't do anything traditional. Like, if there's a specific way to do something, I do it differently because it always hits harder. No one wants to see the same type of thing over and over and over. And that's what everybody's doing. They see one influencer or one blogger, one podcaster doing something, so they want to copy it. But the world is filled with all that now, and there's no more originality. So I try to, you know, go and... To pierce through. Yeah. You got, you got, in order to cut through, you got to do things differently in business, in life, in, I don't know, relationships. like Music, everything. Music. Look at this shit. Yeah. I mean, you're, you're an artist. The only way, and I've been... You're podcasting with a car guy. What does one have to do with the other? Nothing, but maybe it'll slap. <laughs> You know? Well, I think it will slap because yeah. there's, there's a look, there's a feel, and you can't just repeat what other people are doing. And on your note with the, the professional photographers and they, they follow the guidelines mm-hmm. of what to do, well, that essentially means that 99% of all the photos you'll see will be shot with a specific criteria in mind. And when that criteria is in mind, the way I see it, the way I think about marketing is I'm just thinking about people, not photographers, not professional photographers. Random layman's, normal people scrolling. Mm-hmm. Yeah. How do I catch their eye in the feed? Exactly. And if you're giving them something that their subconscious has always seen, it won't pop. But you, by taking your shots a, d- a little different, you making it, things a little bubblier, creating 
ag- aggressive contrast. Yeah. They will slap. Exactly. And and it's I don't only do it to pop, but I do it because I love that stuff. Like I'm a I'm a big nerd. I'm a science fiction fantasy nerd. Everything is colorful, everything is saturated. It's very magical and beautiful and that's I try to put that in the things that I create. Yeah, so it's not like your your purpose is oh, I need to do this because this will translate to likes. It's what you love. Like, you know those high five moments like when we're talking about Metallica. Yeah. In the studio. In the studio and Justice for All. It's like when you feel it really good, you have the confidence enough to put it out and you know it's going to slap. Whereas you can pay 10 times as much, work with a real pro photographer, and that photo just is just going to be blah. Yeah. And at the end of the day, as the artist, because essentially you're the artist, yeah, it's it doesn't matter if your procedures are legit. It matters who's reacting. Exactly. And I think a small superpower that I do have is I know how to evoke emotion out of people. Um, in everything I post, in every story I post, or in every question that I answer when I answer my questions, I know how to reply and get a response and a remark out of someone. I know how to make someone go, oh, whether it's good or bad, whether I want to create controversy or not, I'm very, um, how do I call it? I just know. You're good at provoking. I'm good at provoking people. I'm good at getting a conversation started, and I'm good at making people feel a certain way. That's what I, that's what I, I've noticed. It's like, let's say it's slight political incorrectness or it's just slightly left or right of center Mm -hmm. that you're able to pierce. I call it that, like the, the balance of normal, like you pierce outside of it, like the uncanny Valley, which is normal Mm -hmm. where you go outside of it. And that's when you just push those buttons. Cause I read your, your questions and answers. Cause you get so many people who ask you questions, both on drive with Dre and Andy Moneris. Yeah. And I, I can't stop watching them. Once I start reading your questions or looking at your answers, I have to go through all of them because they're addictive. Yeah, and that's what people have told me. I do it for fun because I have a great time doing it. And at night, it's a cool way for me to unwind, just answer some questions, pass the time during these weird quarantine days. So um, yeah, it's, it's, I, I love it. And people seem to, to like it too, especially when I do the Good Vibe Fridays. Oh, that, that's fantastic. I haven't done it in a minute, but... Um, well, today's Friday, so maybe you can do Friday, that tonight. Today's Friday, maybe tonight I'll do that, yeah. Well, you see, like, the, whenever you do something, whether it be your cars or the questions or general conversations with people, if you're having fun and you love what you're doing, the result is usually just an outpouring of people say, yeah, fuck yeah, give me more. Mm-hmm. As uh, Kevin Smith would say, take my money. 100%. Um, people feel it when it's genuine and when, when you're passionate, and... It's like that law of attraction. They feel my emotion when I'm responding or when I'm talking. And if it's happy and positive, they love it and they want to read more. Like, especially the good vibe questions. Like, I ask people what they want to do. Like, uh, what good things happened to them in the last couple of weeks or whatever. And now I don't even do it for myself. I do it for others because I get, like, I'll answer, like, 30 to 40 questions or whatever or, or statements from people. Then I'll get like 400 DMs back that day of people telling me that this is their favorite segment on the internet because it makes them so happy. It brings joy. Yeah, because you're, if you're having a shit day, which it happens to everybody, reading about other people's good day and like what great things happened to someone else who was having a shit day, like it makes you feel better and it makes you be like, oh, wow, maybe my day isn't so bad. Like this guy's so happy because this happened and here I am complaining about something that is actually pretty yeah, meaningless. It's like, unlike the news, exa- like, for example, which would... <laughs> oh, nice. ASMR, bro. Yeah. What, what is this, even? It's the new Bulletproof... Uh, <laughs> uh, Bulletproof became a sponsor in 2024. In 2020, okay, Bulletproof, yeah. Um, it's the, Collagen, protein, MCT oil. It's a new keto. version of this. Yeah, it's a new version. Well, let's see what flavor... It's delicious. I, oh, I love this stuff. So Doesn't much. it taste a little bit like uh, chocolate? Yeah. Tastes like old school chocolate milk. Yeah. I love it. With a little bit of a, a flavor there, but... Uh, old bulletproof cold brew. Yeah. Um, a lot of the way that you're... Exp- oh, yeah. So the transmission of news we were talking about. Mm-hmm. Like, we know when you watch the news, whatever fucking party it is. Yeah. It's like you're downloading shit vibes. It's like there's these screens who are yelling at, uh, yelling at each other constantly, and you're literally... Whether you agree or not, you're downloading shit vibes. Because oh, oh, first yeah. of all, I don't even think anyone believes what they're saying. No. So right there, it's inauthentic. So you're downloading this like garbage shit. 
Whereas, let's say your Good Vibe Fridays, mm-hmm. when people are watching it, it's happy. It's happy. It feels good. It's it's first of all, it's it's perspective. Mm-hmm. It's good. It's literally good vibes. Like vibes are a real thing. Like see this this thing right here. Oh yeah. The subconscious mind needs good vibes. Absolutely. If your brain wants to do something. Yeah. It can't if this is fucking downloading shit. Mm-hmm. And uh, like speaking of, po- I'm not going to talk about politics because I don't do that. But the other day I watched the the presidential debate or whatever, like the first one a couple weeks ago, and. So I tuned in like 10 minutes before it started. And I don't know what it was, a CNN or Fox. I don't even it know. CNN. It was CNN. I think. Literally just watching and listening to the people speaking, I had to turn my TV off. I got anxiety. So I don't know how these people watch the news all day long, every day. Of course, they're high stress. They get cancer and all this stuff because they're just downloading garbage vibes, bad information, um, all the fear that the government and the news and media is putting into people. Like You're just downloading that all day long. Of course, you're going to be miserable. Put some happy stuff. I told my mom, like, I remember telling my mom, like, 10 years ago, like, I don't watch the news. Like, she'd say, Andy, you don't watch the news? Like, to get this information. And I was like, no, it's depressing. Why would I, if if it doesn't change my immediate life, I don't care. Now my mom's the same. She doesn't watch the news. (laughs) No, I I think that's becoming very popular of, of like, people who are, um, you know, who worry about their their vibe or their health or their mental health or all that stuff. If you're going to... Spend your time watching the news. You're just going to fuck yourself. If there's a oh, direct yeah. correlation, let's say you watch that shit for two days. Day three, you're like all wound up. You're like, oh, you're scared. Is he this side or that side or what the fuck's going on? And regardless of what political party you, I don't know, subscribe or ascribe doesn't to. doesn't matter who you vote for. Everyone's a puppet. And, and you're, just, <laughs> you're just receiving frustrated people who are arguing with each other. Exactly. So it's. Turn that off. Yeah. Put like, something happy. If you want to be happy. And like, you're a happy dude. If look, like the cliche is, if you want to be like happy, surround yourself with happy and good people, right? Well, that's only a part of it, but it's also what you're inputting, um, in your food, let's say, in your media consumption, in your Instagram, who you follow. It it's all it all has it all goes together. So it's not just like the people you're with, but it's what you're watching, what you're eating. It's to create the like the optimal the optimum self, you have to follow all those guidelines in order to really level up. And I would say though that like the the people you hang out with most are probably downloading the same inputs that you are. Yes. Right. So let's say you watch a lot of news on social media, or you're eating a lot of shit, or you're doing a lot of that. And we all go through these phases mm. in our lives, but it's like. Oh, in this era of my downloading phase, I was hanging out with these people because you were vibing with them mm-hmm. because you were at the same frequency. Yeah. But like, you know, you've, you've like changed your life a little bit. Yes. Or a lot bit. A lot yeah. bit. A lot bit. <laughs> I like that. A lot bit. Like me. And well, we pretty much did it at the same time. I think it. Yeah. Six months apart. Exactly. And we were, we were partying hard. We were having a great time. Like mm-hmm. we loved all the people around us, but you, when you started to change your, let's say your habits, your behaviors, you weren't, you know. Uh, 50 pounds overweight anymore and yeah. you weren't uh, drinking four nights a week and you weren't doing those things there almost became a lot less to talk about with or in common or even the desire to see those people that existed within your world before that yeah and um, it, it's an input thing exactly and then i think one day it just clicked after a, a buddy's bachelor party and i uh i came home on a sunday night I really hated myself and everything I'd done that weekend. Um, and on the Monday, I stopped drinking for, I think, almost two years. I didn't touch a drop of alcohol. I said, we're done here. I can't do this. I said, I, I asked myself, what, <laughs> what do you want to be in like 10 years? <laughs> and are you on the path to achieving that? And when I asked myself the question, I laughed. I said, no, not even close. I said, if I keep going like this, I'm going to die in 10 years. So um, in just one day, I just cut everything off slowly phased out the people that didn't benefit me in my life. Uh, I was a little lonely at first because when you've been doing something for like five, 10 years nonstop, and then you just cut it immediately, it's always a little weird even going out, but uh, it was worth it because my perspective in like that first month of pure clarity, eating well, training, um, not partying, no drinking, no sugar, your perspective changes and you see the world clearly now. And uh, that was like the beginning of, a whole new life, like Andy 2.0. How old were you when that happened? 26, 25. Okay. And you, you had a pretty like 
wild couple of years before then. Oh yeah. So would you say that that bachelor party was the the peak of? Because look, I was there, and it was, <laughs> yeah, it was it was like not impressive. No. It, it was it was stupid. It was stupid. And like, I, weren't there th- phones being thrown in the pool? Yeah, I just got so drunk. Like, it was Take lo- my friend's phone, throw it in the pool. Then he's like, "Well, I'm taking your phone." I said, "No, you're not." And I threw my own phone in the pool back when they were not waterproof. Just stupid things, spending ludicrous amounts of money. Um, not getting anything out of that. I just said, you know what? It's, it's, it's time to stop. I think sometime around, I think a year later too, because after I stopped drinking, I needed, I needed another, something else to like put my energy out in. So I guess I probably started spending tons of money and traveling a lot and like keeping myself busy. I remember you texted me. I was in Greece and you were like, yo, uh, you're spending like three times more than you're earning right now. And I was earning a lot. <laughs> <laughs> and I looked at my phone. I was like, "Why well, you got to tell me this when I'm fucking on vacation or whatever?" But uh, I laughed, and that well, that kind of made it click too. And I was like, "Okay, look, I, I adjusted one part of my life. Now, okay, now I got to fix this part of my life. Why am I spending so much money? Why am I trying to hide away from my work? Why by doing other things? Like, there has to be a reason. It has to make sense." So again, I questioned myself. I said, "Okay, if I'm doing this, that means I'm not necessarily happy. Because if I was happy, I wouldn't have to." run from my actual work life at home. And I think that was the beginning of me saying, okay, I, I don't want to run a business anymore. I don't want to do any of that stuff. We were, we were running a business together. Yeah. And uh, you were at the office a lot back then. And I, I, I wasn't, I didn't know why I wasn't, but now I know why I wasn't because my subconscious just wasn't happy. My soul wasn't happy. So I would spend less time at the office taking bigger paychecks, but spending my life as far away from there as possible so i loved the money part of it because i can go fuck around all over the world but i really didn't like being there so then i had to i told myself okay how can we make a living doing something we actually love and i'm still trying to figure it out but uh and i have i won't say i have figured it out but i'm on the path and i know what i like i know what i want and uh you just got to work to do it the process is is refining itself, right? Like that's what life is, right? The process is never perfect. You're always growing and you're always refining. Always refining. So like, let's say when you were drinking and partying, you're just like, oh, I, I don't want any more of this life. Mm-hmm. But it's like, it's maybe like you didn't figure out the source of, let's say the the need mm-hmm. to to be a disaster. And so you, you went healthier, but you hadn't found your... Rhythm. way to your rhythm or your, or where to funnel that energy. So that energy went into like traveling and being away and doing all that stuff, but still, uh, at an unhealthy rate. Yeah. It wasn't making sense. Yeah. It wasn't making sense. I think that's, yeah, that's when we decided, uh, I got a phone call one day and someone was like, yo, uh, we're interested in buying your company. I was like 26, 27 or something like that. And I called you and you were like, I don't know, explore it. <laughs> and then we started exploring it and we realized, yeah, you know what? It's so crazy. This is going to be the, oppor- the a golden opportunity for us to be able to get out of business, not necessarily get out of business, get out of this business manufacturing and, you know, taking, you know, cashing out. And that will give us the ability not to retire forever, but to take a couple years and figure out exactly what we want to do with our time. Yeah, it gave us some runway to be able to like very thankful for it. It gave us the runway to be able to, to get into a new rhythm and figure out what we really want to do on our own terms. Yeah. And just before I, we continue, like a lot of people, they don't, they don't know. Uh, a lot of my followers have asked me this question and I guess it's cause they don't know how it is to actually run a business or why people start a business. And they say, why did you sell your business if it was good and you were making money? So you don't, you don't start a business necessarily to sell it. If I did, I would, because you grow a business, you create something great, and you sell it because there's a big multiple. So you multiply whatever your bottom line is by X amount, depending what the industry is, and you cash out pretty big, whereas you can keep your business, have your employees, and make your paycheck. But for me, selling the business, and for you also, was to, to, to get paid as much as possible so that we can just chill out for as long as we needed until we figured out what the next move was. And we did that twice in two years and that was nice. And we're very fortunate for that. But uh, yeah, so you don't necessarily, like selling a business doesn't mean it's it's a bad thing. A lot of people think, oh, you sold your business, that's bad. But like, no, you 
selling it is like um, the best thing you yeah. can do. It's hard to, to explain it to someone who's not in the exact situation because mm. there's a lot of variables that people don't understand. Like there's a lot of stress. There's a, the idea of owning a business has a lot of like gravitas to it, but there's a lot of stresses that, that come with it. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and it's, every case is different. Like, let's say you're running a business and you love it and, and it's bringing you joy and fulfillment and all that stuff. There's no reason to sell it. And as you go on, it builds value and, and it's good for you. Yeah. But this wasn't the case for us. No, it, it wasn't. Um, it was, it was a tough competitive industry. The products didn't reflect our state of mind or what we really want to do. We, we were kind of this, this thing fell into our laps. It fell into our laps. We did what we could with it. And then I think we, we made the best of it. We're both artists, right? We're artists with a good sense of business. Whereas a lot of people are either business people or artists, but to have both of those is, is rare. And, uh, I think we finally both decided to exploit that and use our talents in that way. But I also noticed at the same time, because being an artist is quite volatile and it's harder and riskier, um, how to actually make some money um, aside from that that artist risk, let's say. Totally. Which is why I uh, we had an opportunity to invest a few years ago, and we did, and then that company sold three years later, and we made a huge return on it. And that's when I really, it opened my eyes, like, oh, shit, like, you can put money into something, have great people running those companies, and then you can you can cash out huge later. And that was like, whoa, now I'm an investor. Google, what is an investor? What yeah. does an investor do? You know, and then you learn, you invest in some stuff that doesn't work out. You invest in stuff that does work out. And then you keep refining like with your process. Anything, like with everything, life, relationships, social media, uh, business, you try something, you fail, you try again. But everyone stops at the failure because they can't fail twice. Well, it's, 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 it's very hard to get back up. It's tough it's and demoralizing, <laughs> but, uh, yeah, yeah, for me, the more failures, the more lessons and the better you get the, the whole uh, investing side of, of life, because like we're artists, we want to, our product or our game plan is a risky one risk in the one sense, of the most <laughs> in, in the sense that there's no, uh, proven trajectory. It's not one plus one equals two. No, it's, it's it, not. I'm getting this job. I'm getting this paycheck. And with this paycheck, I can um, have this house, car or whatever. It's, it's like we're going all in on this thing. If we fail, we are broke. If we win, we kill it. Yeah. So with our artistic endeavors, it's like one plus one will either equal zero or a million. Yes. Right. And so there's, there's no, no in between. There's no, it's, or it's one plus one equals minus a million or one plus one equals a million. Exactly. Um, but that's why the investment side of things has opened my eyes too and refined it to, to show me that as much as I might think I'm a businessman I, or a business person, whatever the fuck, I'm not. Because there's people running businesses who are getting up at 5 a.m. and they're hustling and they're running this and they're running teams and they have 12 Skype meetings a day or Zoom meetings and they're doing all this stuff. And it's like, I don't, there's no chance <laughs> that I could fucking compete with these people. It, it's, not, it's not that you can't, you probably can, but you don't want to. No, man, I, I can't. Cause I know it's going to, it comes at a cost when I'm going high octane in one level, I'm going to go high octane in the other one. And that's one that I chose to like extinguish. Exactly. I, I can't be, I remember back in the day closing like a good business deal. What would I do? I'd close a, I'd close a, a great account, you know, and then, uh, I'd go party my face off for four days and spend in those four days what that account would have brought me in three years, which makes no sense, right? Like, maybe that's just us being crazy. But I, I think that is a, is a good segue back to being in the 1% versus in competing in a, let's say, low imagination, uh, high competitor market. Because mm -hmm. the, the, the industry we came from was high, com high competition. Uh, there was no real creative edge there. And no. so we probably got such a distaste for like work, work hours, hours, hours. And you're for commodities for, yeah, you're, you're, you have to, you'll lose a customer if the price, if he gets the price at like 5% discount. Exactly. And it's like, you're essentially a whore. Mm -hmm. And I'm not, I'm not interested in that. I'm, I'm interested in big companies that have built brands that have built, uh, 
products that people care about, you know, that are differentiated and then have people behind them who are excited. Or things people need. Yeah, exactly. And that was not the vessel. Mm -hmm. That it was not the vessel. No. And as much as like I really wanted it to be, I like I worked my ass off to try to transform it. Yeah. And to rebuild it. But at the end of the day, when I was crunching the numbers, I realized, man, it's gonna take me, if I'm doing this by myself, 25 years to gain three percent market share. It wasn't worth it. By that time, the competition will already be 25 years ahead of me. <laughs> and that's when you gave me that call. Cause I, I don't I remember crunching the numbers and being like, as soon as I saw that there was the pace I wanted to go, but I understood that the employees and the team that you work with, they have their daily jobs. So transitioning into a new way of doing business, mm -hmm. in my mind, I was like, yeah, well, they can do it because I can think it. Impossible. People around you who are not doing your particular job, which is to see the future, cannot move at your pace because they're doing what they're doing. And... I thought I could do what I wanted to do in three years when realistically it was probably 30 years. And when I came to that realization, I'm like, I'm going to be like 50 something gaining 3% market share in an industry that I don't really give a fuck about. Um, and then you called me because, because right there, my motivation died. Yeah. It's like, I, when I you made that when you made those calculations and you were like, you read it on paper and you're like, nope. Yeah, I was no, like, no, no, that's gonna be a no for me. Dog. I was like, I'm not, I'm checked out. And then you gave me a call and said, yo, I got a phone call and uh, someone's interested. Someone's interested. And I was like, by God. Yeah. That was, that was some, uh, I was like, ah. that was some like the secret shit. Yeah. That was, uh, that, I remember, <laughs> I remember exactly where I was when I got that phone call. Care to share? Um, I was at like some warehouse with my girlfriend at the time. And I got a phone call and like, we had to go upstairs in an elevator, but I didn't want to cut the phone call. So I was like, okay, go without me. And she was kind of annoyed. Like, oh, you're so annoying. You're always working. Business guy. Yeah. And uh, that was like the greatest phone call I got in like five years. So I'm happy I took it. It really was. And actually, it's funny. I think I had an assistant at the time and she was, uh, she knew that I didn't like to take phone calls. Like I gave no one my cell phone number and uh she called me. She's like, I think you might want to take this call. This guy wanted your number. I didn't give it to him, but he's from this company and this is what he wants. I was like, give me that guy's fucking number right now. I right called him now. back in four seconds. I was like, yo, what up? He's like, yeah, I'm working for a company in Italy and uh, we all want to come visit. I said, I'm ready. Whenever you want, let me know. Yeah. And uh, I, I think our experience with the, the other company before kind of warmed us up to the idea of a sale. Yes. And so it's like everything worked in sequence. And that's why I have been thinking this recently. It's like if anyone was in our shoes, mm -hmm. they would have done the same thing. It's not like we're, I don't think we're some kind of special breed. There's a I would say if business people were in our shoes, they would do the same thing. But remember, like no, a lot of people we told, they were like, are you fucking nuts? Why are you selling that? Why would you sell your company? There's a weird emotional. Even mom at first was like, why are you selling your company? Well, I, th I think I wrote the song Isabel. Because of that? Because I had a fight with mom. Okay. And didn't talk to her because she didn't get where I was coming from. Maybe I came in hot, which I did probably. You, you did at that time. That was... Uh, I was a little... I was a little it was more. a volatile time. It was a crazy time. We were changing our lives, our Every, behaviors. It, yeah, yeah. It was like... But you see how the world opened as we changed? It was hard to take those... To make those moves, especially when everyone thinks you're nuts all the time. Um but yeah, it's, but I that, think that was perfect though. Cause it was great. We were in a militant state almost. We wanted to rebuild. We had had it with, with mediocrity. Mm -hmm. We wanted to go guns blazing. Yeah. And all those things we did in the company ended up being the thing that created the buzz around being bought. Yeah. Well, we did create a buzz. We were controversial in our marketing. We were, um, we rebranded, we, we did all that stuff and, when you do a million little, little things, it adds up to huge stuff. So I guess that's, that's and it was, it was. It was never the goal, right? It was never the goal. It just it eventually led there. Yeah. And uh, yeah, every, and we kept pushing. We, we never wanted to, to just be status quo. We didn't want to just keep it where it was. Because if we kept it where it was, nothing would have ever changed. We would probably still be there. You know, just... Coronavirus might have taken us out last year, uh, this year. I think so. Well, I don't know. I know we we're kind of, we're essential business. Yeah, but, but it's, it would have hurt. 
Yeah, especially after those investments that we made. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 It, it would have hurt. Shit was tight. Yeah. Too so tight to mention. It was too tight to mention. So it was, uh, I remember, uh, well, what was it? I remember like, la- like two years ago or even, even less than that. I was saying like, all right, like we got to sell the business. I got to get some, I want to sell my house. I want to sell cars, sell all, anything that I don't particularly need right now. Because I have a feeling the economy is going to take a beating. I didn't predict coronavirus or whatever, but I knew that I wanted to be as liquid as I could if something went down, whether it's a, a depression or uh, the economy crashed or or a pandemic or a, or a pandemic, <laughs> you know. So um, I think I made the right move there because as bad as it is, <laughs> um, a lot of opportunities are coming during this weird pandemic time and it's a great time to make moves. It's a great time to be strategic. So I like that. It really is. And if we hadn't sold the business, we'd and be tied up. That, we'd be tied up. Uh, I remember there was a startup two years ago that I had a chance to invest in. And they didn't have enough liquidity at the time to put the money in there. And I know that if I had done that two years ago, like, I don't want to talk numbers, but like, let's say I put $10 in there. Today, that $10 might be worth about a million. Like, Two, three years later, just because that company has been growing so much. $10 into a million? No, $10, sorry, $10 into... A hundred or a thousand? Like a hundred. Yeah, okay. Yeah, ten, 10x. Yeah, yeah. The $10, yeah, sorry. A million would have been legendary. Let's say a hundred K <laughs> would have turned into a million. Yeah. You know, um, but I lost that opportunity and whatever. But now, you know, you know when people say, oh, if I had known that uh, Apple was going to be huge or Tesla was going to be huge, I would have invested it at the time. But like everybody says that. But the, it's like, you got to be three years ahead of the curve before everyone else invests, right? You, you have to be in, in that frame of mind. Exactly. Always. So, so that's where I am now is I'm trying to see what is going to be good in the next two, three years. Like what is on the rise? And I've met, and I literally, that's why I use my car network. That's why I use my personal network is to meet people who can bring me these opportunities. This is a good connection to, to connect it to the to social media so that people can understand what the purpose is. The purpose of social media is not to, to get likes and feel good about yourself. It's it's a component. It depends for who. No, I know, but for you. Oh, for me, no. For you I don't give and a shit for about me, likes. in a sense, it's it's opened your network tremendously. Yeah. Cause it's it's almost like a it's like a a proof of concept or a, a status thing, as as cheesy as that might sound, it's the real deal because you're getting uh, legit connections. Yeah. Your network is expanding in a very real way. Mm-hmm. And uh, like, I'm not looking for a, a million followers. I don't care. I have like 15,000, but I have a lot of good quality followers. Like I'm not trying to push or pedal anything. So the number doesn't care. To, it doesn't matter to me, but it's, it's who approaches me when they see my stuff. Right. So yeah. I present myself in a specific way. I, I, I make it known that I'm looking for opportunities of investment. By the way, I'm going to put this in here in case anyone watches. Um, I will not invest with someone who's never done business before. We've done that and it didn't work. You lose all your money. So in the if, words if, of uh, Liam Gallagher, not for me, man. No. So if, if you've never so done, you're not an angel investor. I'm not, I used to be, I used to consider myself that now, uh, definitely not because I have like a couple hundred grand at least has been wasted, not wasted, but you learn, but yeah, it's, uh, I can, I will only take that risk with people who have, worked in business, have raised money before, uh, and people who have other investors going in also. I'm not going to be the sole investor. I'm not going to help you start your company uh, because there's a lot more that goes into starting a company than what everyone thinks. And that's why I see tons of uh, companies starting on Instagram and three months later, they close because no one really does the research. They don't know. So if you're going to hit me up, you, you have to have already done something great or have other investors who... In, have invested in, in things. So you're saying this, I gather, because you get a lot of messages about this. Yeah, at least like for investment opportunities, probably 30 a day. Good God. Back in the day when I would promote that on my old Instagram, I had like, when I, before I deleted my old personal one, I had like 50K because I was really pushing that stuff. I was getting hundreds a day. So 30 is okay. I filter them out and whatever. Yeah, but less is more. And yeah, 
Less is definitely more. And that's the beauty of like the way you're using your network. And Drive with Dre is like really a funnel to any Moneris. Yeah. Right? Because it, it's extending your network. Yeah. And Drive with Dre is bigger than it than is. Andy Moneris. So, so with the, because it's like seeing the future a little bit, mm -hmm. right? The whole time travel thing. Yeah. It's, it's like, where can you, where's the next cannabis, right? Like, where's the next this? And it's, it's about figuring out where you can plant seeds. Like, I'm excited about this kind of stuff. Yeah. And, and like, you have the car thing. I have the music thing. But we both use, we use, we use both of those as vessels for other things too. Of course. And they, they can't be ex, like the exclusive only thing that I do. Like I only talk about music. I don't even, I don't even know what I really talk about. I just like look weird. I've got a space suit on most of the time when you see me, but and when you, when you went into that space thing, yeah, it's a whole other look. It's a whole other vibe than what you were doing before. It's not your traditional rock star with a cool leather jacket and whatever. Yeah. Um, you're not putting tattoos on your face for views and probably everyone you actually knew your friends were like, is this guy fucking nuts? Like, what is he doing? Luckily, grow up, you know, luckily for me, most of the friends or the people that I know who follow me knew I was nuts years ago. Exactly. Right. So this is like, oh, they're not even surprised anymore. No, because they, they've seen me, you know, like pretty much get sober um, they've seen you go through it all go. Yeah. They, and I've been, we've been always very public about everything, but yeah. never really about personal life. So we also don't, we like, I think you're like me in, in the sense where you just don't give a fuck what other, other people say or think. No. And also I think what you've learned to do, which I learned to do a little bit earlier was I don't tell anyone what I'm doing. Like what I show on social media is like very small compared to what is actually going on in life and in my mind. And I don't share most, like any cool plans that I have, like I share with you cause you're pretty much me, but I won't share that with even some of my closest friends, family, definitely not because everyone is so fucking critical of what you're doing that it, those vibes just go into your soul and they make you think that you're about, you're going to fail. So I just, I just do what I want yeah, it's on the side. I don't tell anyone about it. And then when they see it, they're like, oh, that's sick. But if you had told them that six months before when you were building it, they're going to say, nah, I don't think that's cool. Yeah. And you're definitely, uh, you have the latest uh, software update because mm -hmm. you're younger than me. So you're wiser than me. <laughs> yep. That's a thing. And I totally agree with you because what I've come to notice is I thought before that I could sell what my imagination is or what I want to do to anybody. But what I've started to realize as I've matured is that people, even me, have a really hard time seeing something without their own filter on it. Mm -hmm. So when you tell someone close to you about a new project that you're working on, they're going to look at it through their lens. Yeah. And so their inadequacies are going to project onto whatever they're telling you regardless of if that's true or not. It's just, if they were in your position, what would their fears be? Yeah. And so they're just projecting it on you and why you shouldn't do it. Exactly, because of their own fear. Exactly. And so I don't even, I don't dislike these people. No. I just know that they're kind of unaware of the words that come out of their mouths because yeah. they don't have that self-awareness. Mm -hmm. And so in your wisdom, it's like better off not saying anything and just doing it. let them see it when it's out, yeah. then try to uh, collapse it in the building phases. Because you're a builder. Yeah. You're an artist. You're a creator. Mm -hmm. You can't get the input of non-creators no. in, in, in your creative mind. Because that's a virus that plants into your subconscious mind and then yeah. starts to fucking poison the well. Yeah. That's why I don't tell anyone shit. I just do it. And that's what I tell people. It's like, yo, don't tell anybody. Just, just do it. And everyone's like, oh, what if I fail? Who cares? Start again. What's the worst thing that happens? You go broke, move in with a friend, move back with your mom for a little bit, do what you got to do. What I'm noticing, though, when I do talk to people about stuff is that they're all way more conservative than we are. Yes. You and I, it's good and it's also bad. Because yes. tomorrow, if, if you everything fails and you end up in the street, you'll be fine. Like for you, it doesn't matter. You don't care if someone else thinks that, 
oh, fuck, look at him. He took a risk and he fucked up and he's on the street. Like, you don't care. You're just going to get up and do something else. Same thing with me. You know, there's Tupperware I can sell. Exactly. You just do anything. If I had to work four jobs and not sleep, I would do it. I wouldn't get Netflix and I wouldn't be like all the people that hit me up for advice or whatever. I see them. I follow them on Instagram or whatever. And they're asking me for advice or what they should do. And I tell them and they're, they make up excuses, but like they all have the, the iPhone 12, you know, iPhone 12 didn't even come out yet, but they all have it. They all have Yeezys or fucking Virgil Abloh shoes. And they are all watching in the latest episodes of the newest series that's like so much time and money you can invest in yourself and you can, and in, in anything, but you're, you're wasting it. And they all create excuses. And I'm just, and at that point I'm like, look, I am, I literally answer like 300 DMs a day at least. And that, and I, now I just tell them the same thing. I'm like, look, if you're not willing to help yourself, I'm not going to help you. Don't bother me. Cause it's like, it's valuable time. My time is worth something and I'm spending it trying to help you, but you're not, you're not making it easy for yourself. Do you feel like they even want to do something or do you feel like they're telling you kind of what you want to hear and trying to like, just like suck energy out of you? Because I felt like a lot of people tell me this shit and they're like watching this or doing that and spending money on bullshit. It's like, they're just trying to like drain me. Yeah. So it's like, I, I've become pretty brutal. Mm-hmm. No, I'm, I'm, I think what people love about me when I answer them is that I'm so brutally honest even if I'm giving like a, I'm not a relationship guy, but if I give every piece of advice I give is, is not with emotion. There's zero emotion in it, whether it's you or a, a random person, I don't know. It's just what's logical. No one goes with logic. They all go with ego and emotion. And that's why everything's always upside down. Like if you give someone just a logical answer, that's, I don't know, that's it. And I'm, brut- I'm honest. Like I'm, I'm never going to tell someone what they want to hear. I'm going to tell them what they think if they ask me. I'll never give anyone my opinion if I'm not asked. Right? Oh yeah, to- totally. But but you. But you if you ask, yourself, I'm going to be brutally honest with you because it's one of those things you do. It's like you're a bro, Doctor Phil, or something. <laughs> yeah. And you're really funny, and you have great perspective, and you you don't choose sides according to like PC or whatever. You're just like no. You say it the way you feel it. Yeah. I don't. I don't have a filter on on my voice. Do you think that uh, that has something to do with the way our parents were? Like if you just look at Georgie or you look at mom, my mom has, mom has no filter at all. She didn't give a fuck. She's lawless. She, Whereas dad really cared about the image and what people thought and this and that. And, um, I took over dad in a lot of aspects, but I also, the, the, the not giving a fuck, I got that from mom. Yeah. But I'd say we share something that, Dad knew how to play the game, mm-hmm. per se. He could gauge himself based on his audience, based on what game he was playing or what chess game he was playing. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah. Mom, Mom's pure punk rock. She is. Which, which it's good that we have that. Mm-hmm. But, uh, but Dad was funny because picture how he was, let's say, at a conference or at a restaurant. And then picture how he was in the office. Two different... He was a fucking savage too. Yeah, he was. He, was, he could have been a stand-up comedian. Yeah. His trolls, his comedic timing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I find myself now, because I'm like working with more people, <laughs> and I find myself like when I want to hit like- Jabbing. Below, below the belt, you know, like I feel, I'm like, God damn, I feel exactly the way he felt. Yeah. Like I know when I used to go into his office when I was 14. And you go look at these people like- And, and he would give me this look like, what? He was on, I don't know, whatever the fuck. He was on eBay buying fucking uh, Corvette parts. Yeah. And he looks at me like- what the fuck do you want? Are you doing in my office? <laughs> <laughs> Good God. Yeah. But but it's always cool to see where you come from because we are elements of that. Oh yeah. Everyone is an, is is a product of where they grew up, right? Yeah. So I think another cool thing, just because that came into my head, was um there's a lot of like kids between like 16 and 20 who hit me up for advice and like 80% of them, it's because their parents don't like, their parents are like, yeah, if you, uh, if you don't go to school, then you're going to be kicked out of the house. And the kids like, for them, it's like the end of the world where I'm like, good, get fucking kicked out of the house. Get the hell out of there. Go as far away from your parents as possible. Learn. They just don't want you to, to fuck up. They don't want you to make mistakes. They, they want you, they're there for you. Like it, they're not doing it to be assholes. They want you to be protected. Right. 
it comes from a place of, of, of love, of love and protection, which is intrinsically fear. Yes. But, and all these, these kids are coming up to me and they're like, yeah, like my parents said this and they won't, they won't, uh, I don't know. They won't let me live at home. If this happens, I'm just like, fuck it. You don't need that. Like do, take your risks, do your thing. Like you don't have to uh, go to university for 42 years, uh, rack up hundreds of thousands of dollars of debt to become an engineer or a doctor, you know, like there's infinite things that you can do. Just do them. But if you're, if you're scared right now of your parents, you'll be scared of everything forever. So just, just step out of there, get out of that comfort zone. If you, if you have to pay rent and go somewhere, get a shithole apartment, work an extra job and just do it, you know, yeah. not, but no one's willing to just do it. Well, there are people willing to do it. Yes. By no one, I mean, the majority, but they're like more and more people are becoming aware I, I of think the it, possibilities in the universe. <laughs> I think it's the 80, 20 rule, which is like, and it borders on the 99, one rule. Mm -hmm. It's like, it's a, it's a law of nature. It's a law of like business. It's a law, like it's in everything. Like let's say 80% of your problems are going to come from 20% of your customers. Uh, 20% of the population creates what 80% consume. Yeah. It's just a natural law. It's like physics. Most people will not do shit. They will just be the ants. Yes. And it's just the way it is. Yeah. And if I think anyone who's in the 80 wants to be in the 20, they can. Mm -hmm. uh, there's, well, look, I go through phases where like, there's what, what, what is the saying? It's like the, the sheep and the wolf, right? I like to be the wolf, not because I want to be the head guy or anything. I don't I actually don't care. Um, I just like to do my own thing. When I, I want to, I do, I do what I want when I want and no one's ever going to tell me otherwise. But every now and then I do like to be the sheep and I do put myself into the 99% where I just chill and go through the motions and not worry about. Well, anything. it feels good. It does feel good every now and then. Like I stopped drinking for two years, but now I'll have my, my rule at first was no more hangovers ever. Um, then I realized as you get older, that's just if you just don't get drunk because then you'll be hung over so now it's like i'll have a glass of wine a drink maybe two like in a week or in a month sometimes and that's it like get a little buzz have a good time and and yeah that's it forget you know sometimes it's nice to forget about what everything else that's going on sometimes you do wake up and you're just like Ugh. i'm i'm the same way i'm yeah. the same way i went like pretty cold turkey mm -hmm. because i didn't know if i was like actually was an alcoholic or something like i didn't yeah. know no but, uh, but yeah, now once in a blue, the restaurant's closed again, so I haven't had a drink. Yeah, right? exactly. But I, I do miss it. That, like, restaurants, like, going once a week, like, I was going with, uh, with, like, my buddy. Yeah. We were doing it once a week when the restaurants opened back up, and it was such a delight to just go out in a public setting. Well, it's, it's nice. And, like, sit in a new environment and, you know, like, be a little cheeky with the waitress. Like, it's fun. Yeah, of course. It's, it's... And then when they shut that off... I remember when they, they announced it, the, it's like the world f or the vibe of the neighborhood just died. It was like, the yeah, I, I was talking to a friend of mine and as soon as um, they closed the everything, all the restaurants and bars again, like two weeks ago for the second wave, yeah. um, I saw that she was in Toronto. I'm like, oh, what are you doing there? She said, the collective vibe of the city of Montreal right now is, is, is horrible. I needed to leave. So she left. So she left for like a week or two because it was, it was, it's hard, man. Right. Winter's coming. Like it's getting dark early. It's getting cold. It's raining. Everything is closed. You can't walk into a coffee shop. You got to wear a mask all the time. It's fucking depressing. And people that are depressed on a normal day, beautiful day and whatever in this gorgeous world right now, they're, they're feeling it. Like I'm not even close to being a depressed person, but fuck, I feel it sometimes too. And I'm sure you do. Oh, definitely. You, you know, you wake up and you question, is everything I'm doing, is, is, is this good? Is what I'm doing good? Is it worth it? You start asking yourself this and you start eating some junk food and then it all just spirals for three days. And then you're like, oh, fuck this. I, I got to go back to being confident. <laughs> yeah. Well, I, I feel like you're like me. We have a really quick rebound time. Yeah. So like I'll, I'll get into a funk and uh, it usually starts with shit food. It usually starts with like, oh, I've been good for the last three and a half days. Mm-hmm. I'm going to do some donuts. Ooh. And then I do that and it just starts a chain of events yeah. that just uh, just collectively deteriorates my motivation and self-confidence. Yeah. But, but then I come back and I've got this like perspective. 
it's crazy. Like, so I, I was living in the countryside about an hour outside of uh, downtown and I just moved, I sold my house and I just moved back to the city. And uh, I was actually excited to move back to the city because I don't have to drive an hour to go to restaurants. I don't have to drive an hour to see friends, you know, like I'm back into, into the mix. It's nice. But the day I moved, they closed everything again. And I'm just like, fuck. And then they closed the gyms because my thing was I was going to, I was busy with the move and all this stuff. And I was like, okay, I'm going to get back to the gym. I'm going to get back into shape and do the whole thing. And then boom, it started. So gyms closed. And then not even in your building, in my building, it's closed. So I messaged the guy in charge of my building like three days ago. I was like, yo, the gym is closed, right? He said, yeah. I said, uh, can I, can I pay to get, uh, oh, you want to grease him, huh? I said, can I pay to get one of the treadmills delivered three floors down to my, my spare bedroom? I tried. He said, no, unfortunately, we can't do that. So I just ordered a treadmill on Amazon. I just did too. Come on. Two days ago. Me too. Two days ago, I ordered a treadmill. Like a $900 one. Oh, rich guy. What do you mean rich guy? How much cheaper can you go? I bought a shitty Chinese one for 500 Oh, whatever. <laughs> but I ordered one too. Mine's probably going to break in three days and I'm going to have to spend 900 extra. But yeah, but yeah. I, I pulled the same move because I was... Look, like, if anyone knows me, they know I fucking hate working out. I hate going to the gym. What? Uh, I just don't like it. It's just, I, I don't like it. Um, I like it actually. Well, no, I, I don't know. I like it. Like, I love going in. I like, look, I live in LA half the time, right? Let's say. Spend six. Well, seven, at least for the last few years. Yeah, last few years. In the data. I, like most of my routine is, is in California. And I love my morning routine. Go get my coffee. Go for a walk. Go to the gym. Like I go to the gym like three, four times a week at least there. And you walk a shitload there. And there I'm doing at least 20,000 steps a day. So it's a lot easier, but like lately with the coronavirus, with my move, with everything and like just being stressed and tired, you know, you're just eating a little more, a little more hearty, getting a little too much pasta and rice in there. And, uh, but you are a chef. I am. So we'll I talk about, we'll talk about I, your, your love of, of cooking. Yeah. I love after. food and cooking and stuff. But, um, yeah, all that to say is that I ordered a treadmill because I was like, no, we got to get back into this. And I, I was going to say that because. Um, the time where I was most, where I felt the best, was the most confident and sure of myself was um, when I went for like pretty much, I think it was like six months. I was like eating so clean and I was training every day. Um, I wasn't watching that many TV shows or movies. Like I'd go to the movies once a week because I love to do that. But I was, everything I was reading was, was, stuff about the universe, stuff about the soul. And that's when I st started getting really spiritual too. So I was doing that. I was not eating. I was eating like 1,200 calories or less per day. I'm a small guy, so that's okay. Uh, no sugar, no alcohol, and um, just working out a lot, eating a lot of green juice, putting a lot of good stuff into me, into my system. And I was like radiating. Like I felt it every morning, every day. The people around me felt it. Everything I would say would happen and come to life. Um, that was a, like, that was sick. So I know what it takes. And I know that if I go into back into that routine, the amount of confidence and shit that's going to get done versus like right now is going to be exponential. It's like you're unshakable in that. I'm unfucking touchable. And, but how difficult is it to get back in, to it? get back into that zone, even though you know what it requires? I know what it requires. I know the results that it yields, but it's like, how the fuck do you get back in? Exactly. And like. <laughs> I'm spoiled, I guess, in the way where like normally I can just, I'm, I'm fortunate enough to be able to just pay and get these things done or whatever. But when it comes to your body and your mind, like that's all you, that's discipline, which is something I greatly lack. So, um, but I'm, I'm very good at just cutting and doing it. So I ordered my treadmill. As soon as that comes in. Good on you, brother. We're, we're going for it. We're going to a good body fat percentage. Um, and it's not necessarily just to look good. Because I can get chicks even if I'm 400 pounds. Oh, look at this guy. And I used to be a fat fuck. So um, only for a year. Um, and uh, you were so fat. <laughs> yeah, I was. I like was. we should post a picture here. of Like you fat. I'll find it. it I'll find greasy it. Greasy as yeah. fuck. Yeah, it was really bad. But um, I know what it takes. And uh, I'm excited to get back into that. Especially now like winter's coming. Normally I spend my winters in, in, in the hot weather. Like I think when I was like. I don't know, like five, six years ago, I was like, I'm never spending another winter in Montreal ever again. And I didn't. But this year, things are different. LA is a complete mess. So. No choy. No choy. Well, no, look, Los Angeles is where I usually go because their winters are nice. They're not too hot either and not humid. So it's like a perfect thing. 
But LA is a mess right now, not just with coronavirus, but with like everything. Riots, this, that going on. It's just, it's, I don't need to be there. So I'm, I'm, it's not ideal. It's not <laughs> ideal. So if I'm going to be stuck in Montreal, like I need my mental health, I need my body, my soul, everything to be like optimum if I'm going to make it through this winter. <laughs> yeah. And, and that's what I'm, that's what I'm going to do. So I'm very excited to get back into the, uh, the healthy routine. Not that I'm unhealthy. I eat still pretty, pretty fucking good. Yeah. But you know what it's like to be in that, in that next level. Yeah. Like I ordered a McFlurry at 2 AM three nights ago. Hey man, it was so good. Happens to the best of us. It was really good. Um, so it, body and mind, because you can have, you know, money to invest in things and think this is good stuff. But usually if, if your frame of mind during when you did it is shit, it usually fucks up. Yeah. At least in my limited experience, my state of mind is usually the reflection of my body. Like you said, like you don't want to get, you just don't want to get a treadmill and get in shape to look good. No, it's, 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 well, it's more obviously of a you want to look good, but it's, it really it sounds cheesy, but your outside is a reflection of your inside. hundred percent. And if you're, you're a greasy fuck on the outside, you're definitely a greasy fuck on the inside. Absolutely. And that's why I chose to, cause I was going back and forth to LA. Like we sold the company. I was, uh, I would, I had been making music like pretty much for forever. fun well, for, 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 for forever. But when I started to the process of selling the business, I started making music again. And when we sold, I, I, I met some people, we went to LA mm -hmm. and there was some action happening with the music and then things kind of got shut down. Yeah. And we came back and we came back here cause we were, I was spending even more time than you yeah. in LA, but the lack of, of doing things and the lack of seeing other people and the, the lack of commitments or anything, it's like there was n no, there was nothing. It like, bodies you. Like there was no, uh, no responsibilities to do anything because there was nothing to do. No. And so I said, fuck it. I'm going to get this place, this office space. Oh yeah. This, this office space came because of the virus. Yeah. You were fed up of staying at home. You needed a new, I was fed up. You needed I, a new place to go. I to. needed to create you responsibility. Were watching the, you were watching the walls bleed. Yeah. Much. I needed to create discipline for myself. I needed to create a routine. I needed to create something where I could be productive. Mm -hmm. And my, my intention was not to start a podcast. My intention was I need to get out of this fucking house. Yeah. Because I'm losing it. Somewhere where you can be a creative. Um, it was three weeks before our buddy Trin was going to get, get rid, rid of, of this place. Yeah. And I re reached out and he said, hey, yeah, my, my lease is ending. You can go in whenever you want. Um, I received my time travel suits that I made in, in February. Yeah. Finally, they came in. Yeah, those are sweet. And I, I said, I just need a place to film content, be away from home, and get a productive office space. Yeah. Started working, built a rhythm, got back in the studio. And I said... Fuck it. I, I started learning that, like, we started outsourcing some stuff mm -hmm. in terms of video editing because that was always my biggest fear. Why don't you start a podcast? You know, because I love to talk. And I was like, I don't want to edit shit and fucking yeah, fuck Yeah, when you say with it's a fear, it's, it's, it's. No, it, not a fear. It's same a. Same with me. I can, I can edit, I can photograph, I can video, and I can do it amazingly too. But I just fucking hate it. Like you like I, to I, do the thing. Like, like today, I came here, I showed up, I sat down, everything was ready. That's how I like to do things. I don't want to, I'm fucking lazy. Dude, okay? I'm fucking lazy too. I'm lazy. <laughs> I need it as easy as possible for me or else I just won't fucking do it. Well, let's just say in, in the, the genetics that we have, because we share identical genetics. Yes. Our core competency that comes out of those genetics, is it imagination or personality or is it like hard work and discipline? No, it's imagination and personality. Yeah, I think that's how our ancestors made it through. It was, was not on their fucking work ethic. Look, I can't work 12 hours a day, ever, on anything. I can't work 10 hours a day. can't work eight. I can't work seven. <laughs> I cannot work six. Five, pushing it. Four, unlikely. Wait, five every day? Yeah. No chance. Exactly. Two hours a day is nice for me. And I try to figure out <laughs> how the fuck can I make money and live this life and travel the world working only two hard hours a day. And it, the, the hack over there is that it can't be work. It has to be something. How can you live your life doing the things you want to do and get paid for it and bring an income doing those things? So it's like when people are like, how much do you work every day? I'm like, I don't know. Like I didn't technically, I didn't even open my fucking laptop. Today. I didn't even open my email today. I actually deleted the email app because I was fed up of notifications, but nice move. 
yeah, it's just it's all it's it's an all day, every day mentality, right? At 2 a.m., if I'm feeling productive and I'm in it, I go in it. Yeah. If I'm not, then I'm not. Then I'll take two weeks off. But like most people can't do that. Of course, of course. But everyone's in a situation, mm -hmm. a particular situation. And it's not about worrying about what other people can do or can't do. It's like given your situation and where you are, how are you most optimal to survive your environment? Yeah. Right? If same with me, same with any, anyone who's doing what they're doing, it's because they're adapting and surviving to their environment. We just happen to be in a different bubble yeah. or a different niche, mm -hmm. right? And it, it's not, a, it's not a, like a status thing. It's like there's all kinds of different things. But people like you and me who are like charismatic people, we go out and we you know, talk, to, talk to the waiter at the restaurant and like you know, pump their tires because it feels good. And it's like- Yeah, I love we, making other people feel good. Exactly. So it's like the people with our personality types are artists. They're people who usually get paid to be on screen. Yeah. These are not people who can manage finances very well. Luckily- <laughs> our course of life brought us to a point where we had to develop these skills somewhat because I feel they severely lacked in our yeah. youth, even now, mm -hmm. but we're getting better. We're getting a, an understanding of things. Yeah. But every, everyone's different. It's like, you can't take a guy who's like a masterful engineer who thrives on, I don't know, 12 hour days where he's like writing code and he's fucking killing it. And he loves it. You put him in front of a camera and he shits his pants. <laughs> yeah. You know? Yeah. Everyone is we different. All, we've all got our own thing. We've all got our thing. So it's about... I think the thing is why there's so much tension in the world or whatever is because most people are not doing their thing. They're trying to do something else. And that sometimes it's because they do it themselves or maybe it's their parents or it's, it's society that is saying, you can't do this, you got to do that because other people are going to think or whatever. But it's just like, no, take what you got and go with it. Do what you can with what you got. Like the way nature works and the way like species evolve, it's they're purely reacting to their environment and either they, they grow and mutate into something else or die off and go extinct. Yeah. We as like, let's say the average North American family lives in such a level of comfort mm -hmm. that you can go your entire life without really getting out in the environment and learning and adapting and growing yeah. because you, you just coast through, you can go your entire life without ever even figuring out what it is that you were meant to do because you, <laughs> you just didn't have to you follow the rules. You brought your lunchbox to school. You brought your lunchbox to work and then you retired at 65. You did everything that kept you safe and that allowed you to reproduce and get a house and pay for it. Yeah. This but, may, this but, might that, be but that crushes souls. It does. Like what, what fucks me up and a lot of people might hate me for saying this is like, look, when we were little kids, when we were in elementary school, right? Or even high school, I don't remember. You bring your lunchbox to school and 12 o'clock comes and you, or 10 o'clock comes and you eat your little snack, your, your little shit. Then, you know, it's the best part of the day. You eat your little fruit roll up or whatever. Oh, and then lunchtime oh, yeah. comes, you, you, oh, what, what, what did mom make me, you know? So you're like seven years old and that's what you're doing. And then I'm seeing these fucking 50, 60, 40 year olds doing the same thing. 10 o'clock comes, they're at their office, they're eating their little snack. 12 o'clock comes, oh, I can't take a phone call, I can't do anything, I gotta eat my lunch. And I'm like, yo, what the fuck? I'm like, you haven't changed since you were six. You're the same, you're doing the same thing and then you're gonna retire and do what? And then you die. And then you look at everyone on the deathbed and every, the thing everyone says is, oh, I wish I would've done this. I wish I would've done this. And like, that used to hit me when I was little. I was like, I'm not gonna be like them. I'm gonna do everything. It, it's fucked up to watch. It, 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 it hurts me. And it's like, I don't want people to be doing that. Like it's, it's. But for, I, I, I also I think another unpopular opinion <laughs> is that a lot of people are meant to not ever get out of it. It's like, it's like the comforts outweigh anything else. It's like, it's very easy to be comfortable. Even if you have a low, low, you're a super low income family. You probably still have Netflix and a cell phone and you could just be scrolling even if you live in a fucking tin can. 100%. You could be scrolling anyway. Like so, and you could, you know, pull a whack, send a DM. You can do all the things. So like all the tools and all the things that make our lives so comfortable, they also prevent us subconsciously to want to grow because we're getting all the dopamine hits that we could ever require. Oh yeah, the likes, the messages, the if you're in a relationship with someone, you get into a little fight, 
all you got to do is you got you take this device you go on a dm someone else is making you happy when you're sad like it's crazy so yeah. of course so someone people- else can make you happy even when you're happy yeah it's like we live in so much abundance that it's actually counterproductive it is whereas like way back in the day there were no depressed neanderthals you know because every day they woke up and it's like, yo, yeah, I, I got to get some fucking food or I'm going to die. I have to survive. I need to find some water. If No one's uh, worrying about dying. No one in North America, I guess, is worrying about dying, you know? Yeah. Or, yeah. Like, the there's other, part. other parts of the world. Yeah, for sure. Uh, we're not uh, saying everyone's like this, but there's a huge amount of the, the population. And no wonder, like, uh, cigarettes and booze and porn, uh, the news, everything that's, like, trash. Any vice. Sells like crazy of casinos course. because most people like we're animals who live in a box. Yeah. With screens. Yeah. And so no wonder like our, our need for like fulfillment is going to be. It has to come from somewhere. It's going to be never ending. Like the demand for getting high, whether it's uh, food, TV, porn, sex. drugs, yeah. sex, whatever. It's like. It's always going to be there. Unlimited. Yeah. Unlimited. But it's like if you. And. There's going to be a steady stream of income that comes in mm-hmm. and you're motivated not to fuck that because then your mortgage will get cut. Yeah. So it's like, oh, I, 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 I hate my job, but I got to stick with it. Like we're in a position where, I don't know, we got, we got out of it. Mm-hmm. Like a, a, I think a concern from people close to us was like, yeah, but that's steady and it's safe and it's consistent yeah, and you exactly. can get loans and more. Like we're fucking floating. Yeah. Like we're investing in shit. Mm-hmm. You know, we we have no real idea of when things are coming in or not. No, and it's not really a concern. But it feels like our natural state is to be in the in-between. Yeah, in, in, in limbo. In limbo. And in limbo... I live many years in limbo. Yeah, and then when shit gets tight, like, something works out, you know? Oh, it's happened so many times where I'm... <laughs> But it's like on the it, brink. Oh my god! Like I don't, I don't like, I don't want to talk about numbers, but it's just hilarious. And and I know that the people watching, my followers watching, will will appreciate it. But it's like, how many times have has my fucking bank account? Have I looked at it and it's there's like, I don't know, eight thousand dollars in there, and I know that next month I've got forty two thousand dollars of payments to make, and things to pay. Right, house, mortgage, business, cars, and no job. And, and well, at the time there was a job oh, okay. like, like, after the job, we, I was, I was all right. But yeah, it's, 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 and I'm just like, <sighs> cause it's like, cause and it's stressful. And then I'm like, oh, boom, something landed. Yes. We got this, <laughs> you know, like right at the, the, the right time. Yeah. One more, what, two more weeks I would have been dead on the street. Um, I feel like we're getting wiser now and like, yeah, we're diversifying mm-hmm. what we're doing out of like necessity and survival. Yeah. Cause we can't just wing shit like that. You can't always wing it. I my rule is wing about sixty five percent of it, but have like some kind of safety somewhere just in case because yeah. I know that I'm reckless. But and that's where our relationship is good because there's a, like we run like a company. Yeah, you and I we we balance each other out on different things like, mm. and that that's a good like perspective and it's like yeah we complement each other we help each other when needed uh, we shit on each other when needed and it works. Yeah, but, uh, it's a nice, respectful. Yeah, but definitely, like people who think that, like we've had it all, like I've had it easy in this and that. Like what, you, whatever you see here is only what I want to show you. It doesn't mean there's not uh, fucking volcanoes erupting in the background sometimes. I spoke to a friend, uh, name's Jr. Okay, yeah, and uh, we were just catching up yesterday, and uh, he told me that like what I'm doing on social media looks interesting, you know, mm-hmm. with like the spacesuit and all that stuff. Yeah, and I'm like, looks nuts, right? He's like. I don't judge. I just know what you told me three years ago, and I'll never forget it, and I repeat it every day. What? It's like, everything you see, smoke and mirrors. Yeah. All fucking smoke and mirrors. It's a good thing and a bad thing. Um, someone today asked me, he said, because the other day I posted, if, hey, if you're having a shit day, send me a message. Let's talk. Whatever. Uh, it was an overwhelming amount of responses, but um, someone messaged me, and he said, look, I'm in a place where I'm not, I'm not happy. And, uh, actually, no, I just forgot completely what I was saying. It's going to come back to me, but I, I, hey. it literally just blanked out. All good. I don't know. What were we saying before that? Uh, smoke and mirrors. Oh yeah. Yeah. So he said, I said, okay, so how old are you and what do you want to, what are you doing right now in life? He's like, I'm 18 and I'm doing some kind of administration work job. 
So what do you, what do you want to do? So I'm going to take a course online. Um, there's a, there's a guy, he's a really good, uh, I think it was for some investing Forex or entrepreneur. I don't know what it was. And he's like, yeah, I'm going to take this course. And I was like, whoa, I was like, that's great. Great initiative. But like, send me the guy, let me see, let me vet him because there's so many people who's all smoke and mirrors. You know, they rent a Lambo. Anyone can spend a thousand dollars to rent a Lambo in one day. Yeah. They got a tight shirt on. They got a tight shirt. They've got the Lambo and they pose in front of the stranger's house in Beverly Hills. And they say that they're, they're, they're killing it. And then they, and they do, sell and you they, a and course they literally, for a thousand bucks. And they literally sell, yeah, they'll sell a hundred courses in a month and that's a hundred grand a month, but they haven't done anything. And they're just literally reading a book <laughs> writing their own version of it and yeah. selling it. So I told them like, watch out. Cause there is so much smoke and mirrors on uh, Instagram. And that's why I try to be transparent with people. I tell them I've been on the brink of bankruptcy. I've spent way more than I made. I've had horrible failures, some great successes. I, I, if you're real with people, they'll be real with you. Like the people who just show all the good stuff and say it's all been great and whatever, you know, it's, all, you know, it's garbage, yeah. you know, you, but cause you know that the, the Steve Jobs of the world, the Jeff Bezos of the world, those beasts, they had fucking 20 fuck-ups before something clicked. And they talk about them. Yeah, and it was, it was a hard road. Yeah, it's not easy. Even, even right now, why Jeff Bezos is he's about to hit a trillion dollar net worth, but he's still grinding every single day, right? That I don't understand. I don't think I could do that. Is he going to hit a trillion net worth? I think in a couple of years, yeah. Holy shit. If this pandemic continues, yeah, man. Oh, yeah, I've been cr- shopping on Amazon like crazy. I don't even know. I, don't, I never go on Amazon. You know how much rice I bought the first two weeks when we thought like we're all going to die? Really? Like, remember when you stocked up your fridge? Oh, yeah. Like you stocked up heavy. Yeah. I was still in LA. I was like, we didn't know. We, this was March. Yeah. I was like, nah, fuck it. Who cares? This is nothing. This is bullshit. It's going to, it's going to pass. Yeah. You flew home and then. Yeah, I flew home. And, and then it was like, me. it was like the great Thursday. Yeah. When I went outside and like everything was gray. But the feeling in the air was gray. There was no one in the street. Yeah. And I was like, it, it's when they, 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 uh, they announced a national or global pandemic. Yeah, well, a pa- I think pandemic means it's a global thing. Okay. So it's a pandemic. Whatever the fuck. Whatever the fuck. When that, because before, when it was leading up, I was like, nah, nah, fucking horse shit. It's a, uh, who cares? But as soon as you, you flew back. I think you flew back two or three days later. Yeah. And it was like ghost town airport. Uh, came back, the, just the feeling in the it air. It felt like the zombie apocalypse. It did. because Three weeks after it hit, you know? Because at the beginning, it's quiet. no one knew what was going on. No, no. Everyone in, in Italy was fucking oh, apparently f- going down like flies. Yeah. So we didn't, we didn't know what the fuck was going on. And I was just like, I tried to order the groceries from like online. In LA? Was, no, no, in, in, in Montreal. Montreal. Yeah. And it was impossible. <laughs> Like you, you, I brought you food. Yeah. You brought me food. And then I was like, yeah, I'll just order shit on Amazon. And it was like my, I ordered like 20 bags of rice. It came like the next day. I was like, oh man, these guys are going to kill it. How about toilet paper? I had. Okay, great. I had toilet paper. Yeah. I still haven't gone through it. How much, how much fucking toilet paper do you need? I don't know. This is insane. Um, that was it. Yeah. That was crazy. Like March. I remember like, cause mom was, was calling us nonstop guys come home we don't know what's happening you're gonna get stuck in california so my goal i said you know what actually this is perfect timing i didn't even bring all my suitcase i brought a small carry-on or whatever i had to ship your your stuff you shipped it because my goal was okay i'm gonna go to montreal my new car had just arrived so i was like okay this is great in case they shut anything down i'm gonna fly home i'm gonna pick up my new car ship it to california and go to california so if we do quarantine i'll quarantine there that was my goal, but then they literally closed borders. They what cl- a story, Mark. They, they, closed, <laughs> they closed everything, so, um, but it was okay. A lot, of cool th- a lot of good things did happen for me during this uh, pandemic, so I'm pretty grateful for it. What are some of those things that were great for you? Uh, one was reconnecting with myself. Great, so uh, dive into that a little bit. Oh, f- like, cause you Nothing, you, it's just, you it's touched just- on spirituality earlier, so maybe this is like a, a place to talk about that. Maybe, um, I wouldn't say I was like, I meant more like when you stay home and you've got nowhere to go and nothing to do, you, you start to reflect on the things you were doing and you're like, okay, maybe this wasn't needed. Look, I can live great and happy without this element in my life. So why did I need to do that? And you kind of, it's, it's basically like going on your desktop, on your laptop and cleaning it up. 
putting things in the trash, putting things into folders. You're, I, I got to organize my life and, and see what is really important, what is really not important, where I should go, what I should do, who I should be technically. Um, so that was good. Also, like good things happened. Investment opportunities happened. Um, car stuff happened. I sold my house. Um, yeah. So it was so a lot of there was you took a positive out of it rather than like a net negative. Yeah, I mean, it's the only. It's it, I think it's that's really, a frame of mind, right? It is a frame of mind. But look, at also I do sympathize with so many people who have been negatively affected, like the people whose restaurants, like they worked their whole lives, they open a restaurant, boom, bankruptcy, or or things like that. Like it's 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 tough, and it's not their fault. It's not like it's not has nothing to do with their state of mind. It's this is what happened, and. Yeah, that's a, that's a very good point because we are flexible. Let's like we we got out of what we were the industry we're in. We cashed out. We have this this comfort pad. Yeah, a lot of people don't have that. A lot of people no. are grinding and working and building their their world every day. Yeah, and this and this just halted it. Whether it's a gym or a yoga studio or a restaurant or whatever, anyone who has a physical business right now, not anyone, but a lot of them, it's it's just difficult. Yeah, but I think it did open a lot of people's eyes, which is what I'm noticing. I'm on my phone a lot and I talk to people all day long and I've noticed the good thing about this, this coronavirus is that people have started waking up and seeing what they are actually capable of, how you can thrive without like how you can thrive just on the Internet right now. Why would you need a physical store if your online sales have just gone up 5,000%, right? So it's, it's the good thing about this is that it has changed people's perspectives. It has shifted them into questioning things. Like I saw, um, I, I follow this guy, Jay, Jay Alvarez, I think is his name. He's in, he's in Hawaii slash LA. Stud surfer dude. Stud surfer dude, good looking guy. Um, very, he thinks the way we think, but he has a major audience. So he did a, a few polls the other day, and uh, one of them was, do you trust your governments, yes or no? And he's got like 5 million followers or something, and it was like 80%, <laughs> no, they do not trust their government. If you would have asked that this time last year, it would have been probably like 60% yes, 40% no. But now, now because there's a lot of horse shit going on, you know, they mask it with all these things that are happening in the world, um, and people are just fed up now. And there's no way of really knowing the truth, but I no. think people have a really good sense of when they, they think there's bullshit going on. And no, like when you smell shit, it usually is shit. Yeah. Is so, the so there's no way of finding what the shit really is. No. Because it's, I look, I love conspiracies more than the next guy. As much as the next guy, I don't I know what it. the expression is. Yeah. But to say, because there's a lot of people coming out of the woodwork now who are like, they, they've latched on to a conspiracy yeah. and that's their truth. Yeah, like as much as it's fun to think about this stuff, you don't even you don't have the data. You don't know. No. So so just because it's alternative and you just discovered it doesn't mean it that's the truth. Exactly. Like I do believe that I do believe that a lot of conspiracies are true. When I have dug and done months or years of research myself, but a lot of them are bullshit. But I do know that I don't care what's real or what's not. And I don't have to prove to anyone what is because as soon as you start saying your real opinion, you really open up a, a can of worms with people. So I stay, I stay pretty yeah. quiet about it. Well, because you also understand that your opinion is, you don't have like a hundred percent. And I don't, yeah, I don't have the actual data. Yeah. So it, it is what it is. But to go back to the, the more productive point was that you said people are opening their eyes of what they can really do. People are waking up because as we were saying earlier, um, People have never really got out into the environment uh, to really battle the elements to see what they're made of, which is always much more than they even believe. 100%. This, a lot of people are so affected and it's destroyed their, their consistent, steady stream of income. So, so while a lot of people are hurting, I'm sure there's a lot of people, like you said, this has given them the opportunity to figure out, oh man. Like it's putting them in a creative space. Like, oh, I can sell online. I could do this. I could do this side business. I'm going to start making pies. I'm going to start Fuck yeah. uh, doing this. I'm going to do a podcast. I'm going to do. When it's do or die, you figure it out. Yeah. And, and, I, and, I, and 90, I'd say like you and I live in the do or die type of situation every day. Yeah. 
most people are not in that situation. They have a safe job, steady income, a wife, spouse, whatever, that also has an income and everything is cool, right? So they don't have to. But now during this pandemic, it's like, oh shit, a, a household nor making, I don't know, collectively 100 to 200K a year is now making zero. You got to figure it out. You got to figure it out quick. And now the kids got to figure it out because the parents can't support the kid right now. So it's almost so everyone's like, like figuring it out and they're like, oh, wow, I can do this. I can do this. And it's like, and, and we're seeing it, you know, like, oh, I see it every day and I love are, it because, and it really shows that when you do put people under pressure, they will come out on top. If you challenge their livelihood, people will do what they need to do. Yeah. And that's a beautiful thing. Mm -hmm. And so that is a positive that's coming out of this pandemic is that it's showing people their true colors because when they're put in a survival state, they will survive. And that's a beautiful thing. It is. It's, it's a beautiful thing. And uh, I love watching people thrive and learn, even if it hurts. Well, it's the only way to do it. Yeah. You don't just learn because it feels good. Nothing good comes easy. It's, look, it's, like, sure. it's like a workout or, or a long fast. What's happening during a long fast? Cells are dying off, mm -hmm. weak cells, so that the stronger ones can thrive. And that's just a, a metaphor for when shit gets really bad, the, the, the lazy components of yourself or whatever, they die off because it, now it's time to win. Yeah, 100%. Even then, Stimulus like, for growth. When I tell people I fast, I don't tell people I fast anymore because... Are you most, doing intermittent fasting? Cause, no, because <laughs> most people are uneducated. So you tell them you didn't eat breakfast and they're like, but breakfast is the most important meal of the day. I was like, who told you that besides your mother and the, the fucking teacher? Like, who, who proved that? And I'll literally send them links <laughs> proving why. But I, I don't like to have these conversations. They waste my time. So I just don't tell anyone. That I'm fasting. Yeah, but now it's, it's pretty I'm, fucking mainstream. If you don't now, if you it's haven't heard about mainstream. fasting now, like maybe three years ago or five years ago when I was doing it at, at work. Yeah. You were like, yeah, your brother's fucking nuts. Mm -hmm. But I'm glad it's, and I it's, can't, I can't even go back. Like every now and then I'll have lunch, maybe twice or three times a year, I'll have breakfast. That's not a black coffee, um, but it kills my day. <laughs> even if it's like fruits and something light, it like it. I, it ruins me. Like, I remember I go for uh, coffee every Sunday with a friend, Trin, mm -hmm. a recurring guest on the pod. Al? Al. Al Lockerson. <laughs> yeah. Fucking Al. And I remember going to Arthur's. It's a place right in town where they have amazing pancakes. The best pancakes in the whole world. Amazing. Arthur's on Notre Dame. And I remember we were having a great conversation and we went to Arthur's and I ordered the pancakes and they got there and I had a coffee. I got this buzz going. And halfway through... The pancakes, I start, I realized that I was, I had become so negative. I was, ta I was like <laughs> talking shit at the beginning of the conversation. I was talking about a project I was working on. Yeah. And then halfway through, I was talking about why I shouldn't be doing this project. Yeah. And then I'm like, oh fuck, it's this like high sugar. Poisonous, poisoning Giving me soul. a little buzz and then like dropping me down. Well, I, I feel so sensitive to things that affect me now where before I was just numb to everything. Yeah. Well, think about like. When we had the, when we were, had the company, the big company, and you and I wouldn't be eating lunch or whatever, and then we would notice an extreme dip in productivity after everyone ate lunch. Like, it was like, we, we were, we were, they were eating? we were tracking everyone's hours, we were tracking their productivity, not because we were like spying on them, but we needed to make our company efficient, and in order to be efficient, margins each, were low, bro, we each, needed to figure it out. Each employee had to be efficient, so we were watching them, what are you doing, how are you eating, how was productivity after lunch, and then you look at what they're eating for lunch, and they're eating like double cheeseburgers with a side of fries, onion pizza. rings, like eight slices of pizza, and while that's all amazing, delicious food, no shit, you're gonna, you're gonna be dead after, you can't think after that, you need like two hours for your body to recover from it minimum. I go into a depression after I have that shit. Well, so does everyone else. They just don't know it. So like, I remember like on Fridays, we, we used to get everyone donuts. In the warehouse, yeah. In the warehouse, even in the front office, everyone would get donuts and they'd look forward to it every, every Friday. But then I'm just like, okay, you're one, you're spending 35 minutes eating donuts. Two, you're dead from 10.30 to lunchtime. And then you eat lunch and then you're dead. So your whole Friday I, re I remember a, a, a revolt. When we changed the um, the donuts to the fruits, donuts or something? to edible arrangements to fruits, fruits, fruit, they lost it. They're, like, and we were also younger and, and more naive, or whatever. More naive, uh, less um, 
able to empathize with with their situations and exactly. like understanding the gut microbiome yeah it really like, helped it's like it's our internal machine our internal it's like a dog that lives inside of us you know when dogs know what time to eat yeah uh so that's what our body is our body's no different than a dog's body so like oh. all those signals we get to our brain so if that dog's expecting a treat at 10 o'clock at 10 o'clock and you and you give that cute little puppy a piece of lettuce a piece of lettuce he's gonna fucking get pissed because <laughs> Not him. He's gonna shit all over the, the floor. Person, but the microbiome, the the ecosystem that lives within it the person, it needs it. That it needs that snack. Was banking has 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 planned his day around that. Yeah, snack. has budgeted their energy around that fucking thing. Yeah. So now I know it'll only piss people off. Of course. Whereas yeah. before we I'm were like, just learning back yeah, then. No, you need to be fucking healthy, and so and we also learned that most people aren't like super. Like they can just change a routine in an instant. Well, even us, it takes long, but like, cause we have hard heads. Mm-hmm. But as soon as we brought the donuts back, there was a, a sense of calm and relaxation yeah. <laughs> that, that was swept among, uh, around the building. And then I was like, look, I can't change the perspective of 100 people by myself. So, uh, I just sell the company <laughs> <laughs> and it fucking fell in our lap, man. Yeah, no, it, that's when I knew I didn't want to be dealing with so many people all the time. That's like, I think the best part of not running a big business anymore is uh, not having to deal. Like I loved a lot of the employees, most of them, but you still have to deal with them. You still have to deal with their problems, their issues. Mm, my dog doesn't feel well. I got to stay home. Like, yeah, my kid has and, a flu. And look, I do empathize with them, but at the end of the day, like I'm trying to run a business here. So, and, and I don't think based on our personality type, that was the position for us. No. I say even for Pops. Yeah. He was so stressed in life. Yeah. Because I think he was doing something that was innately not meant for him. Like, I think he could have had a wonderful livelihood as a, as a, as a sales guy, as a, just a sales guy. Yeah. Selling whatever. Mm-hmm. Because his, his value add, his core competency was his amazing personality and his ability to light up a room. Yeah. Uh, the ability to light up a room doesn't help you in HR. No. It, it doesn't. It's usually worse. It doesn't help on your balance sheet. No. Not even close. You need someone cutthroat. Yeah. In there. Um, but well, that's suited for that specific thing. And it comes back to what you're saying is like people aren't, don't do what's in, intrinsically uh, what they're meant to do. Yeah. And that was just another result, uh, another example of it. And us getting out of it. That, yeah. For me, like... I never again want to run a business with anything more than 10 employees. At this point in my life, I don't, right? I'm pretty sure it's the same with you. Uh, th- still run a business. Like we opened our business in, in California. We're not going to talk about it yet, but it's something very cool. And it's, we pay some people and we're eventually going to have more employees, which is fine. But like, but it's a small, va- it's something a- small, something we love, right? That's very, absolutely very, very important. Anyone like, look, if I wanted to, I, I can start pretty much any kind of company, push it. And I'm pretty sure I'll be very successful in it, but I'm not going to do something just for the money. I, but or like, else i myself. But successful in what, in what department? Not all departments. No, not, not, not all departments. Not the life department. No, successful in bringing in revenue. Yes. But I don't give a shit because what are you going to do with all that money if you're miserable? You, and if you, you can only like, spend go, it at rates that are uncontrollable. Exactly. So it's just, it's back to square one, right? Whereas, yeah. Whereas this venture that you're talking about is based on something that, that banks on our core competencies. Yeah. We don't need to have a massive, um, corporation to be able to pull this off because most of it is mind power Yeah, and imagination. And, uh, I'm excited about it because I know I can't wait to, uh, the world to open up a little bit more just so I can it's not that it's been stopped it's just been heavily slowed down um but it's cool yeah Actually, I think we should be getting some good news in like the next two weeks I'm excited for that yeah me too because that's going really well uh fellow time travelers you're gonna you're gonna love it oh yeah hell hell yeah uh so do you want to take some questions maybe I I put on my Instagram uh I was doing a podcast I have no idea what people are gonna ask so let's uh let's check that all out so is this from the Drive with Dre account or the Andy no, I it's on my personal. All right. And so what was the question that you asked the ecosystem? Nothing. I said... Well, you uh, said something. I'm a guest on the Me Show podcast today. I don't even know what this podcast is called. Me neither yet. All right. 
I said, anything specific you want to hear us talk about? I might, I might answer some questions. Whoa. So, so I'll go here and see if there's like maybe one or two or three. Um, the Mulholland rituals. What, what about? JR. He wrote that? Yeah. Oh, sweet. My car history. I'm not going to talk about my car history because that information's already out there. Let's see. Uh, <laughs> my dick size. All right, so uh, no, no. What would you say? It's great. It's a great one. Are Are you happy with it? Yeah, you're content. I'm content. Do it you works. feel at dick size? Um, let's say you're at you're comfortable with your dick size. Yeah. You say? Do you think that if you were uncomfortable with your dick size, that like what you would be in the world or how you like mm-hmm. how you would build businesses or portray yourself would be different? Oh, like small dick syndrome. Yeah. When you like, have to is what well, is that a thing? I don't know. I I have no idea. Like, do you think that you're confident, cool? Or whatever, because you're satisfied with yourself. I think maybe it has some it's an element to do with of it. it. Yeah, maybe if if I had a small penis, that uh, I would have to bulk up somewhere else, whether it's in my personality or I don't know. Yeah, but but I'm, I'm sure I'm sure it plays a part on a subconscious level at least. Maybe. Um, Okay, so this is a question that people ask. Best career choices, excluding science and tech. It's like when people ask me, what should I invest in? Like how, I'm like, there's so many careers. There's so many different investments that you can make. It's really like what are what you're educating yourself in and what you like. Yeah, right? what do like, you like? Some people love real estate. They watch the real estate shows on Netflix, Selling the Sunset, and I fucking love all these shows and whatever, but real estate is not a huge passion of mine like i like nice houses but like but i know some people die hard they love real estate they love being able to sell a house and negotiate and so they go into real estate they sell some houses then they realize how they can invest themselves when they start making money that's one avenue you can do stocks but like i can't tell you what career yeah what the fuck do you like yeah it's like what do you like tell me what you (laughs) like what your passions are what you kind of are studying like look can i make a a fortune in four or like forex trading, day trading, and and stuff like that, probably. But I know nothing about it. I'm not educated in it, and I don't give a shit about it. For me, yeah. So like, if you're gonna ask me what career choice, like, tell me what you like first. Like, give me something to work with, and I'll really. Well, even the guide person you. asking this should ask themselves this question. But look, the thing is, people don't ask themselves questions. They they just blindly talk. But it's not a bad question. It's just it's. It's something I can't really answer unless you give me more information about yourself. So maybe we can look at it in a less specific way. Yeah. And it's like, what would be a good so like today, a good type of job, right? Like an online business, maybe? So, so someone asked me a similar question the other day, and I was like, look, right now, I would focus everything on online. What can you do today that is online? The internet will never die. Whereas, and if it does, the world's over. It's if it does, the world is over. That's the, the, that's the least of your problems. But like right now, don't open a clothing store. Don't open a restaurant. Don't open a coffee shop. Don't open a gym. Why? Because look what's happening in the world. If those things close, what the hell are you going to do? Make sure that you, can, you have a backup plan. And what's the backup plan? Selling on the internet. Why? Because most people will keep their jobs. Most people will not. <laughs> like today, you can't go out and spend money on restaurants and why would you buy a nice purse or a nice car if you're just going to be staying at home right so there's money to be spent sell stuff on the internet that'll always be good that's 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 what i would say today sell something that people will use or like that you can sell on the internet without having a physical location you don't have to worry about rent you don't have to worry about too many employees there's so many what do they call those like not drop shipping but like you with your your albums and stuff like that like there's points of yeah, uh, points of distribution. Like yeah. you, can, you can. You don't like, have to do everything. Like when yourself someone anymore. orders my T-shirt, yeah. I don't have to pack it up and mail it, and, and it gets sent to. And you don't have an employee that does it either. No, I. I it's done automatically. It's in the price of the T-shirt I pay. Like let's say yeah. someone orders my T-shirt, it goes to this company. They print it on demand. They ship it. They charge me. It gets shipped to the person. It's like how can you set up your life in an easy, efficient way? Easy, efficient way. Yeah, low overhead. Yeah. That so you can that you can grow into. So I say low overhead online. Well, because online is lean. It's so lean. Test your ads, see what works. Yeah. Okay. Another question. Um, giving up alcohol and partying, we already touched on. The guy who asked that question. That, what's the question? 
it was, it's not a question because I said, what should I talk about? Oh, okay. Like giving up on alcohol and partying. Um, I've mess- we've messaged with this guy a few times and over the last year or two, he's been trying to like stop partying. I don't know whether he was doing drugs or, or alcohol or whatever it was. Seems successful though, but like it doesn't matter how I was making tons of money and I was partying my life away. It fucks you up. And he started asking himself those questions and he said he's like three months clean or something. Which during this time is like the hardest time to be clean. Even I'm not fucking even. Wait, is it because, is it really because he's not hanging out with the people because he can't? Do you think as soon as he sees those people again, the gears get turned on? Because for the last three months, everything was open. Well, right. We could go to restaurants. We could go to bars. We can do everything we were doing. Okay. Fair enough. Fair enough. So during like, especially after quarantine to go back into the world, that's the, that was, that's difficult because now you're going to, you haven't had a drink at a restaurant in six months now you can and you don't so that's pretty strong so giving giving that up like we, we touched on it before so i won't yeah I won't do that but, but i'd say it's definitely the people if, if it, it, the it, biggest part is the people around you like i remember at first when i told people i was like not stopping i was stopping drinking like it was only the people around me who were like oh you're so fucking lame blah 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 but like that's it it's just because they were they felt threatened that I was going to stop and it was going to benefit my life and they were continuing and you know that they want to get out of it, but they, they're, they're too weak to do it. Yeah. I don't know if they have that kind of awareness. I, not. I don't, I don't think there's an awareness or all that much. It's just like, Oh, you're, you're different. You're leaving the crowd. Let me, let me kind of bully you. Mm-hmm. But fuck that noise. Yeah. Um, People are the greatest source of like, uh, energy and inspiration or influence. Whether you like it or not, your body downloading is downloading information subconsciously, constantly. Yeah. So you, you just got to know that your body is just a vessel that's downloading. So just put it in places that's going to download the right stuff that you want. Yeah. Or else you just blindly go where the tide takes you. <laughs> I'll answer another question now. This, this one's good. It said, I see so many entrepreneurs that have so much time in a day. How do they have that? And I think that's like, they're just... They're, on, they're successful entrepreneurs because they know how to manage their time properly. Like, I'd say a lot of the guys that this guy probably follows, they wake up early. So they, they got a 5 a.m. start. They work out, have their cup of coffee. Um, they answer emails. So it's like by 8 a.m., they've done already everything that normal people get done, let's say, by lunchtime or 1 o'clock. By 8 a.m., they've done all that little stupid stuff. And then... They also don't waste, they don't watch Netflix. They don't. Well, maybe they do. No, they do. Um, but when I say, like, I watch Netflix, but I'm not, I'm not binging eight hours a night like most people. That's a shitload. Yeah. Like, like, literally, I see it. Like, I, I see it all the time. And right, look, right now, I admit there's, there's not that much to do. So I'm watching more than normal. But I'm also not complaining about having not enough time to do the things I want to do. Yeah. I, I don't think people uh, attribute. Or look at their time. Like, they don't budget their time. No. Like, when I started counting how much time I was spending on certain things and trying to balance out my schedule to to see what I wanted to do and how much time I was wasting, it became clear how much time was actually open and how much I was just burning sc- scrolling. 100%. Sc- scrolling, shopping online, physically shopping, like doing everything you can besides doing things that will contribute to your future. Yeah. It's and- doing things... Like I tell people live in the present, but have a path towards your future. If that's what, if that's what you're trying to do. Cause so many people are just trying to like, I don't know. So people are stuck in the present. They don't think about their future. So they're just consuming, consuming, whether it's media or physical items. They're just turning the wheel. They're turning the wheel. Then you have other people who are only looking to the future and they're always frustrated because their goals aren't coming to life because they're not living enough in the present. Yeah, they're not you moving. Need, you need a nice balance. Yeah, and I definitely haven't figured it out, but I'm, I'm, I feel like I'm on to it. No one has figured out anything. Yeah. We're constantly evolving. Like, and, and that's a, a very comforting thing. It's to know that no one really knows what they're doing. As long as you're just not repeating the same mistake yesterday, like today. Yeah. That's, you're going to have a, a positive outcome. Yeah. There's gonna, it's going to be a growth pattern. <laughs> You know? Yeah. Um, let's see. So I answered this one on my Instagram, but I will answer it now. Again. So some guy wrote, girls 
should focus more on only pans in the kitchen rather than only fans in their bed. So he's saying girls should focus in the kitchen and learn how to cook and do all this stuff rather than just showing their tits on OnlyFans. Who is this guy? I don't know who he is. <laughs> but like I said when I responded on Instagram, I said, you shouldn't concern yourself with what other girls are doing. Like, why, if you're a dude, like, why are you mad if this girl's showing her tits? Like, I said, every, it's, it's, it's 2020. Every girl has sent a titty pic. As soon as cameras were available on phones, it was the end of that, right? So, like, nobody cares if they leak. Nobody does anything. Like, if you can make 5000 a month or 2000 a month or 10 or 20 or 50 showing a little tit or ass, who, why does that bother, why should that bother anyone? Right? Absolutely. And there's nothing wrong with it. Like, there really is. It, it, it is. Look, it's like, it's like, look, it's safer I, than I, prostitution. I, I, it's safer than prostitution and stripping. A lot of them don't even show full nudity. Low overhead. No overhead. No overhead. They're doing it from work. They can actually write off their rent. You exactly. know what I mean? So like, and I say, I always say this, do what you can with what you got. It's like me. I've got some money and I've got some cars. I use those to leverage other opportunities. That's what I do with my cars bring me infinite opportunities. So I use them. Right now, if you're a girl and you have no job and you need to make some money and you got 20,000 followers, like on Instagram or whatever, just you, use it. If that's what you want, if you're not shy, go for it. Because there's nothing wrong with tits. The, the female body- How do you think we got here? Via fucking. Fucking and sucking. Two people fucked and they created us. Yes. Right? Sex is, it's, it, sex and nudity, like, it's, it's, we've all become pretty much desensitized to it. So now the, the greatest sensation is seeing someone you follow who you would never normally see naked. You can see them for $8 a month. Sign me up, right? Fuck it. Everybody wins. The guy wins. It's like, and another person, she messaged me because she, she liked what I said on Instagram. And she's like, uh, yeah, everyone shits on people who are uh, porn actors, porn stars, but they all watch porn. All day, like not all day long, but like once a day. They're watching their porn, but they will shit on you if you're a porn star. Because I think it's contradictory, obviously. Well, well, I think it comes from a lack of self awareness again. Yeah. Because someone is using their filter. It's like they don't want to be a porn star because they're worried about what their direct community would think about them. So yeah. that's what they're projecting. But fuck it. It's like there's an unlimited demand for, for, for titties and ass of all varieties. What? Yeah. And if you have a fan base and you are not shy, go for it. God bless you. Yeah, have a great time. Like even celebrities are doing that. What is it? Like the, the rapper Tyga or who is the highest paid one? There's Bella Thorne. She made like 10 million last month just from OnlyFans. She doesn't even do nudes, right? I don't even think there was Nip. I think Cardi B, who was putting some nudity, is made even more than that, I think. I don't know. Like, nobody cares. Like, a tit is a tit. A tit really, a nobody tit. cares. It, it doesn't matter. Like, what, do you want to be a politician? It's mothers and fathers of these people who care. And whatever, like, it is what it is. Like, <laughs> and, But all these people, like, who do make it, like Cardi B or Bella Thorne or these people, only got to where they got because they fucking don't care. They did what, whatever they had to do. And they were put in situations, I guess, where they had to survive. Yeah, look, like, I don't support Cardi B and I don't like anything that she says, but she did what she had to do. As ratchet as she is... She didn't give a fuck what anyone cared about, what anyone said. She just did it. I, I, and look, you never know. Look, if someone tells you like, uh, okay, I, I, I show my tits on OnlyFans and I'm making uh, $15,000 a month and she's putting that money away and she does it for two years. She's got a couple hundred grand saved up and she can use that couple hundred grand to put investments, real estate, whatever, real estate, businesses, whatever, which can make her millions of dollars. Like, it's just another vessel. I know how many. Fa- how do you think everyone started? How many fathers do I know? How many governments? What, what the hell did the Rothschilds have to do <laughs> to make their fortunes? Right? It's yeah. Like everyone had to do. Not everyone. A lot of people had to do some shady shit. I know tons of guys who are fathers. Fifty now. Cent They're, was a drug dealer. Fifty Cent was a drug dealer. I know, like a friend of mine, like his his dad was a was a coke dealer, and now he's rich as fuck. Not from coke because he did coke. He sold coke for two years, made enough money, and invested it all in real estate, and he's fucking killing it. So, like, I, 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 I'm not saying go sell drugs or go prostitute yourself or, or, or show your tits, but I'm just, like, saying don't concern yourself with what this guy or this girl is doing. They're on their own path, and they're doing what they got to do for themselves, and they're using what 
skills they have to move up in the They're world. They're using their natural abilities yeah. to do what they can to survive in this world. So it's like, look to them not as literal inspiration, but as look at their formula. Yeah. What did they have that they were able to do? They found something that works and they went with it. And yeah. then they, it's like, it's like you're, you're huge on YouTube or you're huge on Instagram. That's great. But what if those things closed tomorrow? How can you use your 1 million followers to help support your life. You need to do something else. Like you can't keep doing YouTube or Instagram forever because that's not a forever thing. You need to take those fans, a core set of fans and bring them somewhere else. And that's what people are doing. Yeah, whether it's your fans or the money you've made or mm -hmm. whatever the hell it is. It's like, yeah, don't Just concern do yourselves with other people who are very comfortable in their skin and doing whatever they need to do to make themselves happy. Yeah, and like, if you're criticizing someone else for doing something, it's because you're not happy with yourself. You're like, well, yeah, because it's like you're envious or jealous that they're making money doing that when you're there stroking it to them. <laughs> yeah. And you're essentially saying, I'm pissed at this person because they're making things happen and I'm holding my dick. Exactly. And, and look to the guy who asked me the question, I'm not actually like, I'm not trying to shit on you. It was just a, it was just a great question because it, Amazing opened, it, question. it opened something that, should be discussed because it is a form of taboo, this OnlyFans thing. Um, but I, I don't see anything wrong with it. I don't see showing your tits as a bad thing anymore. Like it's, it's not what it used to be. And the female body is a beautiful thing. So. And we like to see things that, that we don't see often. So if there's someone who's not like available on porn and you want to see them naked, you could just subscribe for eight bucks a month. You could probably, here's a pro tip. Just subscribe for the first month. And you just <laughs> yeah. never did it. I only heard. Yeah, you, you only know? heard. Yeah, yeah. Subscribe for the first month. Take a screenshot and enjoy it forever. Yeah. Just don't share the screenshot. Exactly. Um, yeah. It's, so do you think they're gonna, there's going to come a point? Because like everyone's worried about like nudes and this and that and like the shit that's been sent in the DMs and like the Snapchat have this database where they hold all this stuff. It's like I think there will actually be like in some database somewhere nudes of every single person that it won't even matter anymore. Like what is how like like someone said to me like okay yeah like I'll never show my t like I'm, they were struggling for money but they have a lot of followers but like I'm not gonna they're like I'm not gonna show my tits like I want to get a real job I'm like I don't want my that to ever leak I'm like bosses are gonna start not giving a fuck because everyone has nudes out like do they even give a fuck no but I'm sure some do but like for me let's say like but like how it, it, like it, realistically let's, you want to go work at the dentist and there's some nudes of you what what how does that affect your performance as a dentist. I don't know. Exactly. Like for me, if my, no, but is the if my, if my is, nudes is, got leaked, is like, the dentist got, first of all, for, for anything to be leaked, someone has to care about you. Yeah. You have to have like a, at least a million fans of something. Or someone just has to be, be out there to get you. Yeah. But then it's, <laughs> that's a whole different story. Re regardless. What I'm, what I'm just saying is like, it doesn't, it doesn't matter. Like, like it, it, look, if, if, if is HR dick, doing a nude if search, you, if your dick appeared on the internet tomorrow, what, what would it change? Uh, I don't know. It'd be pretty funny because uh, I'd be like, yo, mom, check it out. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's hilarious, right? And it, it, yeah, it's like, yo, I was heezed, bro. Yeah, everyone's horny. We're, we're human. We're animals. What, Our, do, what do animals do? They fuck and they reproduce and they, they yeah, try to, to find a mate. To get the species going. So yeah. like to so, be ashamed of that stuff. It's like, obviously, you don't want to be watching porn all day long because it just takes away from your motivation. No, it destroys your soul. But to, to at the same time, long. we are animals. Yeah. And our main reason to be here is to reproduce. We're animals and we're capitalists. So <laughs> if, Look, prostitution if, if I'm a girl, is the oldest profession. It is. And if I'm a girl and I've got something to show and you're willing to pay for it. Who's the fool who does? If, yeah. And, and you're, it's not like I'm, I'm, it's not like you're getting blown. It's not like you're, she's, she's coming to fuck you like crazy. It's safe. It's literally on the internet. Like you're in the comfort of your own home and it is what it is. Like imagine you flew into a planet and like they all look like monkeys. Mm -hmm. And like you find out that these monkeys are like sending pictures to each other. Like to us, all fucking monkeys look the same. Yeah. So be like, oh, look at these fuckers. They like take pictures. Yeah, aliens are probably out there looking at us like, look at these idiots. And they, they're all concerned with them. They, it's the same thing. We're, Small, blue, big, blue. Like to us, we like look different and we have our egos and our identities and all these things. But we're just fucking monkeys. We're just the, the current uh, if you zoom primate. Out, if you zoom out and look at the way we act as a, as a human, as a, like 
we're a disgrace, man. Rich, <laughs> rich, poor. Doesn't it doesn't have to do anything. When you zoom out and when you're like on Mars and you're looking at the Earthlings here, we're all the same. Homeless, billionaire, we're all the same. We're all we're, we're all, all in a cage. <laughs> yeah, and we're and all just a different cage, in a different size. We're just part of an organism. Mm-hmm. Like I see human beings as the race that connected the grid, so that the next cybernetic race can live on top of this. Yeah, like. So it doesn't matter. I, like, just do whatever the look, fuck you want. Just don't hurt anybody. I see us kind of like cars. Um, cars were gas powered at first, and now they're hybrids. They've got gas, and then they've got electric. And soon, soon enough, in the next coming years, it'll be all electric. So humans are like the gas, and now we're kind of with with all the technology we have. We're embracing AI and tech. So we're going towards being a hybrid species. Not that I'm, I'm not a for it. I'm, we not, are dis- I'm not for it. I'm not against it. It is what it is. Like I myself can't change that uh, collectively. If we all want to change it, we will. But if it's improving, I don't think there's any stopping it. No, there's no stopping it. Like, look, they are going to put a chip in, in our yeah whether it's our kids or our grandkids we're, we're gonna get chipped eventually these phones we're, look we're already we're being s- tracked all our they have all our facial recognition two years before this they had all of our fingerprints like they're not stupid they, they know how we tick better than we know how we tick they know what we're gonna click on before we know what we're gonna click on and i don't know why people are so mad about that like it is it is what it is like what difference does it make in your life it's not like you're committing crimes right who cares what your fucking porn history is? Who cares what your buying history is or what your messages are? Like, I always say, like, oh, if the CIA is listening to my conversation, what? What the fuck are you talking about? <laughs> they're, they're gonna they're gonna hear me say a, a a word that is gonna compromise me. Like, no, get out of here, because they have that on everyone else. Exactly, and I'm sure there's a lot of worse things that's going why, on. That's why this character, Doctor Algo. Mm. That, as the arch nemesis of the data controller in your uh, Instagram yeah. TV series. Exactly. Called the feed on my Insta. Yeah. Um, Dr. Algo is monitoring everyone's data, but every time he wants to use someone's data against them, it takes him so long <laughs> and he doesn't to, need- to find it and track it and do whatever that he's like, fucked. he's lost. So, yeah. so he can never actually use it. Cause there's too much. He can't find it. Yeah. That's crazy. Okay. I'm going to do one more question here. All right. And we'll get back into a convo. Oh, we're ripping over here. I like uh, this format. How long have we been going? Two hours. Yeah. Yeah, so we'll wrap it up soon. Yeah. Um, lessons you learned throughout the years or things you would have told your younger self. Okay, so what would you have told your 24-year-old self? So it's six years. Um, fuck. Stop partying for me, I think, it was, is like the main thing. Because as soon as I, 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 I became clear, my perspective on myself and my perspective on the entire world and other people changed. But you only get that if you're clear, which is like no alcohol. Alcohol is fucking poison. And it's great because it takes you to a different place and it, it makes things better. And I, I, forget. I drink some sometimes and it's fine, but like, the amounts that I was drinking before, like you drink to forget, you drink to, to, to get away from that life and have a different, have more confidence, more this, more that. But I think it's like the dog, right? The dog's used to getting that. So mm-hmm. it wants it. Exactly. So like for me, it was like, dude, don't st- stop partying. Get out of this business. Do some, do something you want to do. Do something you love. But did why it, are you doing what you're doing now? Do just, there's so many possibilities. Did it almost make like when you stop drinking, did your normal life that you were doing almost become like intolerable? Like you became so irritable that you couldn't even stay there if you tried? Yeah. That's how it was for me. Yeah. Like everything was pissing me off way more. And I thought like, oh, like I thought I would become nicer. It gets worse before it gets better. And it's like, it's like when people go to rehab, I guess, right? Like drug people. You can't just stop them cold turkey. You got to wean them off. They're going to fucking die. No, I know, but I found that I was way more agreeable when I was drinking. Like, I was like, oh, yeah, someone you, would tell me something, I'd be like, oh, oh, you know what? Yeah, buddy, for sure. Yeah, yeah, it's all hang good. hang out soon, we'll do this. No, but it's, even at work, like, oh, I want to do this, and someone would convince me not to. Yeah, and you'd be like, okay. But then when I was, like, sober, I was like... More of a tyrant. Not a tyrant, but, like, more... No, but I was, more... What more uh, disagreeable, they call it. I'll be like, no, 
I want to do this because of this and and, and that's what we're going to do. Sense and, and this is and, why it makes sense. And, and you're not willing to have a, a, an argument about something you know you're right on. And, and it's in my role and position to bring these to action. It's not yeah. like everything in life is a fucking democracy. No. It's like, I want to do this. Yeah. Before, I would just be like, oh, okay, it's a good idea not to do it. And now I'm like, no, no, I, I just worked the whole weekend planning this thing. Yeah. And I'm going to do it. So yeah, telling your younger self to fucking ease off the booze. I think, yeah, for me, it was like, it was, it was, it was partying and ego, like let go of that. Like I would tell myself, like, if I can time travel, I'll be like, look, dude, like you don't have to do this. Nobody gives a, like, like nobody cares. Do something that you love. Don't do things for other people because I was more like that. Even though like, if you asked me back then, if I was doing it to show off it, I would say no, because I didn't know I was, but like, I would do things way back then more for the approval and reaction of people. So, but that, that just kills you. If you're doing, if you're doing, if you're living your life to, to impress other people, you're, you're going to suffer. Well, cause it's never enough. It never it's ends. It's never enough. And you give someone something, then they want more next time and more, and they demand more from you and this and that. So yeah, lay off the booze, put your ego in the toilet and flush it. And, uh, I'd probably tell myself the same as well as, uh, health like uh yeah the importance of like nutrition exercise and nutrition yeah Nu- and nutrition without think, the proper nutrition you don't even want to work out i think nutrition is the most important thing for any human before job and even mental health like well i, can, nu- nutrition, I think it, get, it is the source of mental health exactly I believe. nutrition what you what are you feeding your body and your soul and your mind that's the, that's the, the foundation. Everything else gets better after that. But if you're constantly drinking and eating shit and not working out and surrounded by shit people, everything in your life is going to be shit. It's always going to be a fight. But if you drop all of that excess weight, just put good... I'm not saying don't ever have a, a fucking McDonald's cheeseburger. Do it. But it can't be the standard. Give yourself a once a month treat. But like, like you said, I don't know, the 80-20 rule... Yeah, eighty twenty rule applies in that too, and yeah. it's like it's it's this thing. It's exactly what you're talking about. Yeah, because in my bro theory that I've come up with, it based on stuff that I read and everything like that. If you're feeding yourself garbage, then you have like an inflammation within you. Like first yeah. of all, your your gut is not getting the nutrients it requires. It's not healthy, and your gut is directly linked to your brain. Yeah. So if your gut is in a state of survival mode and not like, oh, I'm at peace, go and discover the world, it's going to send you nothing but distress signals to your brain and create a filter in your mind that tells you not to do things. Yeah. That creates, like, you know how you were saying, like, when you have the most confidence in yourself and you you believe and things just come, it's when you're eating clean and you're working out. Yeah. When, it's like when your system, when your mitochondria is, like, in weak shape, Yeah. your body doesn't believe that it can move forward. So it's trying to get you to stay exactly. where you are. Yeah, but when you have a clear mind and a clear gut, those two things communicate to each other. And you become a time, time traveler. traveler. Yeah, you become a beast. But yeah, that's for sure. Like, And I notice, like, I'm like you. I like to try different things with my mind, my body, my soul, my routine. So like, what I'm saying is from actual experience. Like, I know like right now I'm not particularly watching my, my diet. I'm not eating like crazy, but like I'm not being you're not counting every calorie i'm not counting my calories i'm not i'm not strict right now i haven't been i will start again soon get back into my routine but i know that in how i am today like i'm i'm not optimal compared to where i have been in the past and i know exactly why and what food and what state of mind and i know how to get back to that it's very easy for me uh well it's very easy for me to know yeah but to to get get back into it it's, it's always difficult like my struggle is to like keep doing that forever but um, every time I do it, I, I learn and I get better and I get better. And, uh, and we find hacks, right? Like we don't have to, it's like, I'm relying less on discipline and more setting up systems for myself that are f- kind of fail safe. Yeah. You know, like I know if I hang out with a lovely lady at night, I'm less likely to climb Mount Pulawak three times and then order Krispy Kreme. Yes. Yes. It, if, cause if I'm ordering Krispy Kreme even twice a week, I'm calorically over my budget for the week 
and my gut is only going to get bigger. Yeah, you really love Krispy Kreme, right? Uh, yeah. Okay. Maybe I should get sp- sponsored as the guy who doesn't like it but loves it. Yeah, exactly. No. I'm just trying to figure it's out. It's just like, a great example because it... My, it, my thing was ice cream sandwiches this summer. Oh, nice. I hadn't yeah. eaten an ice cream sandwich in 15 years, maybe, maybe even longer. That's an old love of mine. And this summer, I must have had 200 of them. <laughs> they were so fucking good. They're amazing. And everybody loves them too. Like you can't... Like, I remember when you, I came over and you pulled one out for me and you're like, hey, take, Mick, I got something for you. Yeah, check this out. Very, very nice. Yeah. But, um, but it's about understanding, engaging yourself. Like mm-hmm. the way I see it is like... As you become more in tune with your body, you're able to catch yourself sooner. So it's like picture you were driving like 10 years ago in the C36 mm. and there's no drive lane assist or whatever the hell it's called. And if you're not paying attention, you could be in the ditch. Yeah. But, n- but now you're driving. Yeah. <laughs> but now it was a cat. Yeah. But now you're driving a new car that has this like lane assist. Yeah. And so where, well before you're in the ditch, you get like a. V- 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 yeah. It's like, yeah. yo, go back. Yeah. I feel like that's how we are now. It is, yeah. We're getting better now. Yeah. Whereas like there's less... We've been refining ourselves more and more and more yeah. and learning and put these like fail safes are programmed into us. Yeah, because we understand our limitations. Yeah. So it's like, I'll just put myself in situations that are conducive to the result that I want. Yeah, like back at like, was it 2013? Like when I had in one, in like eight months, I gained like 40 or 50 pounds. That's legendary. It is legendary. But I lost, like I was like in that state for about a year, a year and a half. Um, that was at the height of my, like, it's when you were taking limos and going on dates. Yeah. Um, <laughs> sick fuck. <laughs> and like, I know that even if I tried my best, I could never be like fat again. Like I'm not jacked by any means right now, <laughs> but I'm not like, I'm not a fat guy. And, no. I, and I know that like, it just, it's just impossible because I'm so, I'm, I know nutrition. I know the mind, I know the body, I like, you know, you're like, when you get into dips, you know, your mood, like you, you understand too much to ever, it's like, I, you I can't know too fall much, so it's, it's, it's impossible. Yeah. Right. Like, no, no, I, I feel you totally. And I, yeah. So it's just, uh, you never stop learning or you, you, no, you should never stop learning. Um, once we stop learning is when we, is, is when you die. Yeah. Except most people stop learning uh, after high school. Yeah. Well, look, look, I don't know. We throw around like most people. I don't know fucking most people. I just know myself. I know, but I, I see the world. I talk to the world. Yeah. I, I travel. I've, I have literally, thank God for social media. I have met so many people in, on every continent. I have friends. So I see how they are. I see how people are everywhere. So I'm, I'm very, I analyze a lot. So that's why I say most people because... When I say most people, and, and I follow, I, I follow a lot of people. So I just know that what most people are doing. Um, but whatever it is, it's just like, do, do what you want to do. Don't do what your parents want to do. Don't do what your friends think you should be doing. Uh, do what you want to be doing and start from there. Don't worry about criticism. Uh, don't worry about getting kicked out of your house if you're young. Just do it. Like Nike says. Like that's do what you can with what you got. Do what you can with what you got. And if you got nothing, you got nothing to lose. So just go for it. Well, if you notice that all the billionaires were the most fucking broke. Yeah. Cause they had, they didn't have the comforts, you know, Steve no. jobs didn't have the love. It's do or die. It's, you know, he it's, it's do or die. And there's and a look, lot, a lot of people are in the middle, including us. Like we have to push ourselves because life is just too fucking comfortable. Exactly. And how many times have, People told you, oh, you're crazy. Whatever you're doing, that's not going to work. It's impossible. Like I get, I got told that all the time for everything. Um, and I say Steve Jobs because that's a, a face that people know. When he was creating the iPhone or the iPad, all his engineers who were the best in the world. Were like, are you fucking crazy? That's impossible. He's like, what are you talking about? He's like, so everyone thought he was an asshole of a boss, but he wasn't an asshole. He was just an assertive guy. He knew what he wanted. He knew it could be done. And he knew that doing the impossible was a, it was achievable and you have to like, you have to push like in order, it, it's nothing easy, nothing great comes easy. You have to push, you have to ruffle some feathers. You have to cut through. And if you know, you make some enemies doing that, it's just cause you're and, threatening them. Yeah. And it, and it's, it's, it's people on the, on the outside who, I don't know, are playing like a, a victim card because I'm pretty sure the engineers, I know the engineers at Tesla are pushed super hard mm-hmm. by Elon but they love that they're there. 
They love that they work 18 hours and they don't sleep and that he's sleeping on the fucking floor. Yeah. And they see him working just as hard as them. But you, you can't build something insane and change industry and like evolve 20 years before without going hard. So was I an asshole before when, when I was not taking no for an answer and no. wanting to change everything? Uh, no, I don't, but I know that I will be perceived as an asshole by someone who can't empathize with my position. Exactly. With my situation. And it is what it is. It is. You well, can't, in life, you cannot please everyone. No. So don't worry about pleasing everyone. Don't worry if you've got some people who think you're an asshole. Like, I don't care if people think I'm an asshole. It is what it is. But because I know that I've helped thousands of people in their lives. And I've put a smile on their face. And I've cha- helped them change their lives and get them on the right path. So it doesn't matter who I've pissed off because I know I've made a lot more people yeah, happy. Definitely. So, and that, that, that gives me fulfillment. And you're not, and you're not an Ass, like there's one thing like being a piece of shit to someone. Yeah. But there's a difference being uh, respectful of yourself and your own boundaries and saying what you believe and doing what you believe in. And if that ruffles someone's feathers, then it, it and they can't understand where you're coming from. That's their fucking problem. Yeah. Fuck them. Yeah, exactly. So it is what it is, gents. It is what it is. All right. So how are we going to wrap this, uh, this here pod up? What Nothing. should we call this thing? Honestly, the I, show podcast. Fuck it. No, no, maybe temporarily, but no, I can't temporarily because I got to like upload it and stuff. Okay. You still got a week. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. We'll, we'll, we'll figure out what you call it, but, um, I want to <laughs> think I want to stick my name on it. Yeah. Because I want to connect it to the music Yeah. because, uh, I am a musician. You, you are. You see that do what you can, what you got. I figured I'd be an artist because I'm so fucking hot, <laughs> you know, and I have yeah. like a beautiful head. Honestly, yeah, it's your, 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 that hair is amazing. I have a voice like an angel. So pretty much. Yeah. Actually, the new music is fucking amazing. The old music is great. The new music is amazing. I miss um, being in LA in studio. Oh, it's so amazing. Like, even if I'm not the one recording, maybe sometimes given my input and in producing, but it's, uh, it's so fun. Love those studio days. It's, it's, and especially with those, like, like we grew up watching like VH1 behind the music. Yeah. Seeing like how we're in studios, like, like guns and roses was in the studio. Exactly. Like it's so, it's so fucking sick. It, it is amazing. And those times are coming back. Oh yeah. hundred percent. And another thing that like uh, a producer friend of mine, the Pelican said, mm. he said, it is a great time to be an artist in this time. If you stick it through. Yeah. Because he's like, a lot of them are just dropping like flies. And they're just everyone's given up. Not everyone. A lot of people are. Giving a lot of people up. are giving up. So it's like you know, I'm fortunate enough to weather the storm. Yeah. And uh, who knows what the future holds? But I feel pretty good about it. I feel pretty good. I oh, love. Yeah. I love. I honestly, I love fucking making music. And if I know you've been doing, you've been doing it for years. Yeah. And if this podcast is the thing that brings awareness, hey, great. Yeah. Or if this podcast becomes, it's like it's a or thing. You never know. Maybe. Itself. Yeah. Who knows what opportunity can come from it, but it's going to get me out of my comfort zone. It's going to get me to reach out to people, uh, yeah. you know, to network. Cause that's something and you're pretty good as like a, a host kind of person. I, th- I think so. Yeah. I can fill dead air pretty interestingly. Yeah. And, uh, hell yeah. I, hell yeah. And, uh, I'm not naturally, uh, the kind of guy who, who reaches out. Yeah. But this is going to give me a reason to. Yeah. Why not? And, and I'm fun. sure I'm going to have some goofy ass people on this. Yeah. And it's, they're good. They're good. They're good. Easy conversations. There's not too much effort put into it. It's not like you prepped or anything. No, man. You're just like, yo, come Friday, two o'clock. Well, cause I don't have any discipline to do it. Like, I'm not going to like, at, like prepare 70 questions and like go through this thing. You're not like the, uh, the guy from hot ones. No, that guy's a God. Chris Evans. I think so. Sean Evans. Sean Evans. Oh, yeah, that guy. That's my favorite. It's not considered a podcast. More like a. TV show. Or yeah, it's a show. It's so good. It's amazing. The the guy, the, look, this Sean guy, Evans is this guy has a talent. Like, he, cause he's a journalist. He literally know? asks people questions. They never like, he's like, the, he's, he's like the Nardwar. Yeah. He's of, asking like people questions that nobody even knows about them. Like Jessica, Al, he'll ask Jessica Alba something and she'll be like, how do you even know this? Like n- my mother, like nobody knows this stuff. His ability to dig deep and, and like, he doesn't read the questions. He doesn't read the questions. He has them on the top of his head. These like deep, crazy, insane questions. It's so good. And I, I asked Paul Rudd, 
because I was taking a leak next to Paul Rudd. What hotel was that at? Chateau, Chateau Marmont. Marmont. Yeah. In LA. And I, I've never talked to anyone while I was pissing. Yeah. But I saw Paul Rudd and he had a very... He was literally like, next, like right in the urinal next to you. Yeah. Like and touching I, arms. I didn't look at his dick or anything, but I ha- <laughs> he had a very welcoming presence. So I was just looking straight up and I didn't start a conversation. I just said, you were great on Hot Ones. Thank you. Yeah. And he said, hey, thanks, man. You know, uh, that was a lot of fun. Yeah. He's like, I, I brought home uh, the, uh, what's, what's the, the, the crazy sauce? The, the bomb? The, yeah. He's like, I brought home uh, the bomb for my kid. He was on the toilet for three days. <laughs> And he kept talking to you after. Yeah. Like you weren't talking to him. And so he, yeah, he kept talking after. And then I was like, how was the host? Like, did he, did he have a card for the questions? He's like, the man is a mythical wizard. <laughs> he is. And he, he was firing those questions straight out of his dome. Yeah. It's crazy. And, but that guy has a talent and he found the perfect vessel yeah. for what he is. And he has a great haircut. <laughs> Fantastic. <laughs> Actually, uh, speaking of Paul Rudd, yesterday I was watching a movie and uh, it said, introducing uh, Paul Stephen Rudd, Halloween Six, Halloween Six, the Tommy cur- Doyle, the, the Curse of Michael Myers, and it, it was uh, he was twenty seven. It was his, one of his first movies, I guess. Wait, he was twenty seven in ninety six. Yeah, how old is he? Well, obviously, I can't do that math because it's not my <laughs> gift. I don't know. He's at least forty seven, fifties. Fucking know. stop now. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Um, but yeah, introducing Paul Stephen Rudd, he was so young. Wow. Yeah, nine percent on Rotten Tomatoes. What do you mean? That movie was legendary. It was legendary. I give it like uh, 42. Was it better than H2O? Yes. It was darker. And his mask was great. That's what I like yeah. about that movie. I watched H2O recently. It really did nothing for me. Okay. Um, and there's even like a CGI mask. It's so weird. Yeah. Maybe. I don't know. When I watched it the other night, I, was, I took a little too much CBD oil. Oh yeah, I okay. wanted to relax a little bit too much. CBD oil—that's what took you there. So it uh, it hit me good. Uh, I watched, oh, maybe it was a watermelon candy. I don't know. Um, I was watching a Sandler movie, Jack and Jill, that I'd never seen. Okay, it's where he like plays his sister, mm-hmm. and my mom, mom, my mom, mom was <laughs> telling us <laughs> that she's t- she told me. Well, watch this movie with Adam Sandler. You know, she's Adam, Sandler. Adam Sandler. Adam Sandler. Adam Sandler. Because she hates all his movies except that one. And I'm like that. I've never even watched it because you know those movies where like the guy plays his whole family, like Eddie Murphy, and like yeah, I that's not hate those not movies. fucking for me. Yeah. And I looked at the Rotten Tomato score, and it was a legendary three percent, three, three. And I'm oh just like, look, when they're that low, they're usually good. And mom liked it. Yeah. And she hates every movie. I, I think she just likes to like movies that she knows I hate. Yeah. Because she's a troll yeah, like she us. Is. It's fun, but look, I know how to close this show. All right. I really got to pee. <laughs> Do you have uh, anything to promote? Uh, you want to say, uh, you know, drive with Dre, any This camera, this camera, this camera. Tell us what you got going on. Yeah, there we go. I've got nothing really going on right now. Well, um, what are your Instagram handles? Um, my personal Instagram is at Andy Manaris. Um, my car Instagram is at drive with Dre. And uh, that's it. Nothing really crazy going on. I'm working on my projects. A lot of them I'm, I'm trying to keep hush hush um, just because I don't want other people's uh, opinions on it. I want to work with a clear mind. They're still babies. They're still babies and I'm nurturing them. So, uh, yeah, but I'm very excited and, uh, yeah, just, uh, I like hit me up all the time. I'm answering all these messages. Um, I'm starting a, a Patreon page in, uh, November and, uh, I'm doing that because at least 100 times per week for the last five years, I get, uh, asked if I'm going to, if I can mentor people and I can't take on like single people to mentor like it's just it's just too much going on there's too many people that want it so i figured the best way to do that which would be good for me good for other people not expensive but worth it for for my the time that it takes because it is something that is going to be uh time consuming for me um yeah so i'm doing a patreon page where i'm going to talk about my stories you can one-on-one message me we can do uh phone calls we can do video calls um and i'm going to set all that up so um stay tuned amazing yeah very happy to hear it yeah i mean look and uh, while i'm trapped in montreal I literally there's, there's not that much else to do so i've got the time to create all that content and and uh talk to people Love it. you'll you'll know my stories of how i came to be successful what i was doing before business what how i got into business how i got out of business uh how i took the plunge to become sober and do what i really love to do like those are all 
things that take a lot of time to discuss and there's an infinite amount of things. So, but yeah, the most is that I can literally help you with your stuff, your business stuff, your life stuff, your relationship stuff. Um, there's demand. I get asked there's all demand. day long and to be on Instagram doing it in the DMs is just difficult. I need to be on a laptop. I need to have a camera. I need like a proper setup. So uh, yeah, I'm, I'm excited about that. I think a lot of people are excited. Like I, I teased that I was going to do it like a month and a half ago. Yeah. And how I, was the response? It was great. People are asking me every day. When is it ready? I can't Amazing. wait. I can't wait. So that's so, great. Yeah. So I was waiting. I, I just moved out of my house and I was pretty busy for the last month or so. So now that I'm all settled in, uh, I've been starting to create that content. And so looking. perspective and advice is essentially your tits. Yeah. Good for you, man. Exactly. Yeah. Very, you do what you can. What you A got. lot of people said you should start an OnlyFans. Yeah. And I well, said, uh, I'm starting one. Hey, if someone wants to pay me 50 G's a month to show my dick, I'll do it all day long. Hey, I don't, I don't care. All right, guys. Oh, wait. All right. Perfect. So, um, as you know, my name is Misho. Yeah. I make music. It's great. Do you like my music? <laughs> I love your music. It's awesome. <laughs> we do like the same type of music. It's amazing. And uh, if you really pay attention to his music, you'll hear me singing sometimes in the background. Oh, yes. This is very true. Yeah. And uh, we're brothers. Uh, brother, Yeah. I would like to thank you very much for appearing on the pod. Thanks. Thanks for having me on the pod or in the pod, in the spaceship. In the fifth dimension. Yeah. Um, I do like your setup better than Joe Rogan's new setup. Oh, thank you very much. I think it's nicer. The colors are great. And I love the, I love our logo. Yes, because your we, logo we more designed it together. Yeah. But like, it represents us. It does. It does. And uh, there's a lot of meaning behind it. So, hey, thanks for having me. Thank and, you very uh, much. I look forward to talking to you next time. Yeah, man. It's going to be and, great. And uh, take her easy. Take her care. Hell thanks. yeah. Bye, guys.